Now it's time to download and install Android Studio. And Android Studio is the program that you're going to use to create Android apps. So open your browser. I'm going to open my browser. I'm going to type here, download Android Studio. Press enter. You click on this link. You click on this green button to download Android Studio. Here we have the license agreement. I'm going to go scroll down and uh, you should read the, the license agreement. I'm going to accept and I'm going to click on download Android Studio. Now the downloading is starting here on the top right hand side. And if you have a different browser, you will see this in a different place. Once the downloading is finished, just open this file. I'm going to close the browser. Now it's asking us if you allow this app to make changes to our device. I'm going to click on yes. I'm going to click on next. Here I'm going to click on next. Make sure to have this checked. This is the folder location where Android Studio is going to be installed. If you want to, you can change this location. So you can click on browse and you can specify a different location, but I'm going to keep the default location. So I'm going to click on next. And uh, here I'm going to click on install. And now Android Studio is going to be installed in my computer. Now I'm going to click on next because the installation is completed. And I'm going to click on finish and we have this uh, start Android Studio checked and that is going to start Android Studio. So I'm going to click on finish and now Android Studio is going to open. All right, so this is the welcome window of uh, Android Studio. This is the place from which you're going to create our projects. One thing that I want to do is uh, I want to actually I have I have here a shortcut. Uh, I I assume that uh, it didn't have a shortcut here. But uh, if for whatever reason you don't have a shortcut for Android Studio, just search Android Studio, search Android Studio, and uh, right click on it and click uh, pin uh, pin to to taskbar. In my case, I'm pinned from taskbar because it's pinned to taskbar. Because in that way, you can, uh, in that way you can easily access Android Studio. So I'm going to open Android Studio again. And here, if you have a, you'll probably have a different uh, theme because uh, in my case, it added this uh, material oceanic theme, which is a theme which I added in a previous. Uh, uh, version of Android Studio and it uh, implicitly imported uh, the settings. But if you don't have this, uh, uh, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna use IntelliJ Lite f uh, theme because this is uh, better for tutorials. And uh, again, you will not have uh, this material oceanic theme because that's a theme that I added in the previous uh, Android Studio that I that I was that was installed in my computer, and uh, it implicitly imported the, those settings for me. And uh, I'm gonna choose IntelliJ Lite for the course because again this is better for tutorials. So click on customize and you can change the team here. And if you want to add more teams like uh, the team that I had previously, which was that Material Oceanic team, this is darker. Uh, I will show you in a separate video how could how to do that. It's very easy. Now I'm going to click uh, on the left hand side on projects and uh, in the next video I'm going to create our first project and I'm going to look at and Android Studio to see what we have there. So see you in the next video. Now it's time to take a look at Android Studio to see how it works. Therefore I'm going to open Android Studio. You should open your Android Studio. On the left hand side, make sure that project is selected. I'm going to click on this plus button to create a new project. From those options that we have here, select empty activity, click on next. Here we need to give a name to our project. I'm going to call it app. This is the package name. We're going to look at packages in the future videos. Next, we have the location where the 
project where the app is going to be created. So you can change this if you want, but I'm going to keep this default location in D. Next, we have the language. So uh, on which language you're going to uh, create this project? So we have here Java or Kotlin. I'm going to choose Kotlin. Next, we have menu SDK. And uh, by default, we have this API 21 Android 5.0 Lollipop. And it says here that this app will run on approximately 98.8% per of devices. So we're going to keep this, def this uh, default uh, selection. So I'm going to click on finish. Now our project is going to be created. All right, so now it's working, it's uh, building our project. All right, so we have, uh, we have this tip. You can uh, keep these tips, uh, like I said in uh, the, the discussion about uh, IntelliJ ID. You can keep these tips because uh, they are very informative if you want, but I'm gonna close now this, but I'm not gonna check these do not show tips because uh, they are very, very informative. So I'm going to close this. And here uh, we have what is called main activity. We're going to see what activities are. And uh, here on the left hand side we have activity main dot XML. We're going to look at that immediately. But uh, we need to wait a little bit until uh, our project is uh, creating until, uh, until it finishes. Because now here it's uh, still working. And uh, depending on what uh, system you have, it will take more or less time. All right, so now our project is created and uh, on the left hand side we have uh, the project pane and we have uh, some folders generated for us. And uh, here we have this, this thing called manifest. You can uh, open this, you have these resources. So if you open this, you have drawable, layout, minimal, values, you have XML. And uh, we're going to look at all of those individually in the next videos. For now, we're going to uh, look just at a few things. So. Let's call out that back. Now, what we have now here is called the main activity. And here we're going to put all of our code. Here we're going to define our logic. Here we're going to define uh, uh, the code which is going to interact with the UI components. And the UI components are in this file called activity main.xml. And XML is uh, it's, a, it's some code. So if you click on this activity main.xml, you see that we have here a preview of your app and we have uh, in the middle we have this uh, this is called a text view we have a text view which says hello world and uh, uh, this is the preview and uh, here you can you can go here or, or on the right hand side on the top and you can click on code to see the xml code which corresponds to the ui components that we have here in our case, we only have a simple, uh, we're going to see what all, all of this, what uh, Im what a image view, what a recycle view that we have here is, is what uh, a text view, what an edit text view is. For now, all we need to know is that this is the preview of the app. And here you can, here we can take, you can drag. So if I, I can delete this, so I'm going to, uh, actually, I, yes, I can delete this. And as you saw, that was constrained. It had the, those lines that that were uh, there. So now I can take from here at X view. You can click here text. Let's see where we have a text view. So on the left hand side here we have text, and I can take a text view here. And now I can put this text view here. And a text view. And while uh, I'm doing that, as you can see, this uh, uh, preview is uh, showing me where is the center. So I'm going to put it here. And now. We have those uh, those things that that are here, and those are for constraining this uh, text view so that it not goes down, up or uh, down or on the left or on the right. So you can you can constrain constrain that thing to 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 stay in the center. And if you let it like this, the way we have it here, it will go up or down or on the left. Uh, not in the in, in this order, but uh, the, why the idea is that it's not it's not gonna stay uh, in the center. 
So what you need to do is to constrain this. And what we are doing now is that we are uh, we are adding the UI components directly. As you saw, I took the text view. Again, we're gonna see what a text view, what a edit text view, what a password. We're gonna look at all of those. What of those are for now. A text view, you just, you just need to know that it's, uh, it's something, it's a UI component with who you can display text. Again, let's come back to what I said previously. So now this is not constrained, so it will, uh, it will not stay in the center, even though I put it here in the center. What, what you, need to, you need to do, you need to constrain it. And to constrain this, we click on this, uh, this circle and we go, we push this up, so we're gonna go here. As you can see now, it's go, it, it, uh, it uh, goes up. Now I'm gonna constrain it down. So I'm gonna push on that uh, circle. So I'm gonna constrain it down. So now it's constrained up and down. So now it will stay in the, vert in the vertical line. It will, not, it will not go up or down, but it will go left or right. So you need to constrain it also left or right. So I'm gonna constrain it on the left and I'm gonna constrain it on the right. And now no matter uh, uh, what we do, this text view will always stay in the center, right? Now, let's see uh, what we are doing now here is we are adding the UI components directly in this preview. So you don't, uh, you don't, you don't use the, what is called the XML code. And here we have constraint layout. And this is basically, as you see, when, you, when I click on this, it's, you have those, uh, 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 selected this is because the in the inside the constraint lay layout is the text view so inside the constraint layout is the text view and the constraint layout uh, layout is uh, like a container which has some specific uh, properties now let's look at the xml code to see what uh, the xml log uh, code looks because we're going to also work with the xml code and uh, while we're going to progress in this uh, course I'm gonna let you choose to either create your UI components directly here using the preview and uh, the panel that we have here, or to use the XML code. Now, let's see the XML code. To see the XML code, we click here where it says code on the, on the top right hand side. And now we have the XML code here, and this is the XML code. And we're gonna see what uh, all of this is, how this works, what all of those properties are doing. Now, as you can see, first at the top we have the we have the constraint layout. So it's starting here, and it's ending here. And within the constraint layout, we have this text view that we added previously. And this is uh, the XML code. And we're going to look at how to work with XML code in the future videos. Now I'm just give you a little introduction to see how uh, all of this uh, works. Now we're going to go back to design to see the preview. So I'm going to click on design. And we're gonna go back. We're gonna go back in the main activity where we're gonna put uh, our code, which is gonna interact with the the UI components that you saw previously. Now, let's see how uh, uh, we can uh, run uh, our uh, our program to see how it uh, how it looks. And to run our program, we click on this run button. But now we have no devices, and here we need to create a device. You need to create a virtual device, and a virtual device is simply a virtual phone on which you can see your uh, your app. So I'm gonna select. Uh, I selected the device manager, and uh, you choose virtual, and you click here where it says create device. Click on create device, and now I'm gonna create a device. We're gonna choose a phone from the left hand side here. I'm gonna click on next, and uh, also you need to select here what kind of phone. I'm gonna choose, uh, let's say, um, let's choose this Pixel X Pro. So you select on the left hand side the uh, phone and we select f uh, Pixel X Pro. So this is the virtual device. This is the virtual phone that is gonna be created on which you're gonna run our apps. So I'm gonna click on next and that uh, now is gonna create our virtual phone. We let this uh, R selected here. I'm gonna click on next. And here, this is the name of uh, the device. So I'm going to click on finish to create a device. So now the device is created. The only thing left is to run our device to see how our uh, app looks. And to do that, we click on this run button that we have here. And now we wait a little bit.
All right, now it's connected to the emulator, to the virtual phone. All right, now our uh, virtual phone is starting. All right, so now our phone uh, started and uh, we have uh, our app opened and we have our text view here in the center. And uh, as I said, it's in the center because we constrained it, so it's to, it will always be in the center. So if I go on the left hand side here on act activity main.xml and uh, I go, uh, let's actually, to and to hide the, the emulator, just click here where it says emulator on the right hand side. So I'm going to click on emulator. So if I don't constrain this. So let's delete the constraints. You don't need to do this. I'm I'm gonna do this because I want to show you how. Because you don't constrain this, it will uh, it will not stay in the center, even though you you put it here, let's say in the center. Now, let's go back to main uh, activity. Let's click on the right hand side on the emulator. Now let's rerun our app. So click on this button that we have here to see where our text views now. So now our text view is here on the left hand side on the on the on the top because now it's not constrained. So let's constrain it back because uh, I want to show you also another thing. So let's click on the emulator to hide it. So let's constrain this vertically and horizontally. I'm gonna go back on main activity click on the right hand side on emulator. Now, this emulator, you can uh, have this emulator showed in, let's actually rerun our app to have the text view in the center. Click on terminate. Now, this emulator that we have here, this uh, virtual phone, we can have it on different places on uh, on our Android Studio. And to see how we can change the place where the uh, uh, the virtual phone is uh, showing, we can go here, up here, and click on this uh, settings uh, icon. So click where it says Show Options menu. And here uh, we have a few few options. And we have here View Mode. So we go here where it says View Mode, and the uh, current mode is duck pin and you can select another one let's say duck unpinned and that didn't do much so let's choose another one let's call let's choose uh, window so if you choose window you, you'll have it in this way and uh, let's go again to view mode and click again on duck pin so now we have on the right hand side again let's click on the view mode again and you also can have it floating so you can have the emulator floating. So if you close uh, Android Studio, actually it will be sh shown Android. So, so you can have it uh, here floating. So uh, you can move this as you can see. But uh, it's up to you what uh, what do you prefer. I prefer to have it duck pin on the right hand side. So this is our discussion about uh, uh, how Android uh, is not uh, comprehensive discussion about how Android Studio uh, works, but uh, this is uh, uh, an introduction on uh, about uh, Android Studio, what is XML, and, and I'm going to see what all of those folders that are here. I'm going to look individually at them. I'm going to look at how we can write XML code. I'm going to see how we can uh, put, how we can add the, the UI components directly, and I'm going to see what what is better. You can choose uh, what uh, version, what option you want. 
also gonna look at this gradle to so see what is this gradle that we have the manifest and all of this but we're gonna do uh, all of that in the next videos therefore now i'm gonna end the video and see you in the next video now it's time to take a deeper look at android studio and uh, particularly gonna look at the project pane on the left hand side and uh, the folders which are within uh, the project pane so if you don't have this open and you have something like this just click on the left hand side on project that is going to open and we're going to click on this greater arrow in front of up and here we have a few folders the first folder that we have here is called manifest and uh, if you open this so if you press on this uh, greater than sign and you go inside uh, this uh, file here we have uh, some uh, code and uh, i'm not gonna talk about this now but we're gonna talk about this uh, in the future video in the future videos um, so i'm gonna close this next we have uh, java so again click on the greater than sign and uh, here we have a few packages we have com that example that app we have com that example that app android test that is for testing and we have uh, com that example that app so i'm gonna click on greater the greater sign in front of that and we have our main activity and our main the main activity and that is inside this package is the place where we're going to put our logic our code that uh, is going to interact with the you with the user interface now if you go down down here where it says resource or it says res this stands for resources and if you click on this you have a few folders here you have draw drawable layout meme map values xml let's start with the first one drawable and drawable this is the folder on which on which you're gonna put all of our all of our uh, images because when you build uh, an app you will have images which are gonna be showed in uh, in our uh, app and uh, this is where we're gonna put our images so i'm gonna close this so this is where we put our images next we have layout and uh, layout basically uh, means what the user is gonna see so we have a single layout here activity that main so is, this is the layout which uh, which corresponds to the main activity that we had here and which is uh, this layout that that is here so if i double click on it it's gonna open the the it's gonna open this thing that we saw in the previous video and if you go to code here we have the code of the of the of the of the activity of that main layout so the layout is what the user sees and here we're going to put our layouts here we can have multiple layouts uh, now i'm going to go back to design so here we have our text view so it's centered All right so i'm going to go to code let's go back to main activity now next we have another folder which is interesting called the meme map and uh, here we have uh, ic lancer and you click on this greater uh, sign and if you double click on this we have this icon and this is the icon which uh, is you're gonna see when you when you download the app and uh, you have multiple uh, icons here because uh, they are uh, they are have different uh, different sizes so uh, actually let me run uh, the code to show you how uh, that icon looks so i'm gonna run this All right, so now the app started and now if I close this app and if I I look at uh, the apps that I have in this uh, virtual phone, you see that we have this icon here app, which is our app that we created. And this app, uh, this that, that icon is the icon from this from this place. So that's this the icon that we have there. All right. Let's uh, bring this back. Now, let's go down. And we have another folder here called values and if you click on this you have colors and strings colors here inside the colors we're going to define all of our colors that we're going to use uh, in our app to give it a more uh, beautiful uh, uh, look and here we have a few colors they are uh, we have this uh, hashtag and we have the the hex code of the of the color 
and you, you see that you have the color. And here you can add more colors and you're gonna see how we're gonna do that in the future videos. So I'm gonna close this. So here you, where you see where you put all colors, which are gonna be used in our app. Next we have strings. And uh, here is the place where we're gonna put all of our strings, all of our uh, text, all of our text that is gonna be displayed in the app. From, on many places and that uh, that is gonna be is gonna be uh, added here and gonna use that because actually let me show you if you go in, in so inside this manifest file you see that here we have uh, android label and we have uh, at string up that name so if i hold control on this and when I hold control and I press enter, it took me inside the, the strings because this string, uh, the, the value of uh, the value that is defined here, because as you can see, it's, as you can see, it's using this uh, uh, address to get the string that is defined here. So this is where we're going to put our colors. So let's close this. Let's close the manifest file and let's go down. And next we have themes. And this is where we're going to define the team which is gonna be the team of our entire app so we have here some things and here we define uh, let me hide hide the emulator and here you're gonna define your team and as you you'll see in the in the future video how we're gonna create how how to personalize our app to make it uh, beautiful so we have teams here and uh, let me close a few folders from here because it looks uh, so let me close this and next we have these Gradle scripts, and this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, those uh, folders we're gonna look in the future videos because now we don't, you know, we're not interested in for, for now in this. So this is uh, what uh, Android Studio has uh, here uh, on the left hand side. This what those folders, uh, this uh, this what those folders are. This what they are doing. Some are storing images. Some are storing layouts. So what the user sees, some uh, one is storing the 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 icon of the app, one is storing the values, which is the colors and strings and so on. So this is our discussion about uh, uh, about the folders that we have on the left hand side of the project, and see you in the next video. So an Android app is divided into three parts when developing application. The first part is called the front end, and this is what the user sees. This is with what the user interacts, the actual app. The second part is called the back end, and this is the code, the logic that we wrote, so that uh, we the developers can see. And when uh, building uh, an Android app, what you'll do is you'll use the Kotlin code to interact with the resources. So you will uh, have the the code interacting with the UI components, with the drawable, with the layouts, with the values. This is what you'll do when you'll, uh, you're building an app, as you'll see. Now, let's take a look at, uh, at the folder layout because uh, uh, I, I want to talk a little bit more about what we have here. So let's open it actually from here. Let's hide the virtual phone because I don't need the virtual phone. And here we have the preview of uh, the app. So we have a text view here in the center. And here we have a, a preview, but without the background and uh, all, all of this stuff. So now we are adding widgets using the design mode that is selected here. And what that means is that we can take directly whatever uh, widget we want and you can add it, you can drag it here in the preview and that is gonna be showed in, a, in, the, in the app. So if I take this button and I drag it here, now it's gonna be added here. Let's also, let's constrain this horizontally. So let's click on this circle. Let's drag that arrow. Let's drag this arrow on the right also. And let's also constrain it vertically. Now, I want this button to always be above the text view. And in order for that to happen, we need to drag this arrow from that circle to this circle of the hello world here. And now, as you can see by the guys that we have here and here, now our uh, button will always be above the text view. Now let's select the text view. So make sure that you click on the text view and it, the text view is selected. And now on the, on the right hand side, we have uh, the attributes of our, uh, of our text view. So here we have the properties that can be changed. The first thing that you can do is that you can move this up or down by, by uh, uh, from here. And this is interesting. 
what you can also do is you can change the width and the height and you can click here to to match constraint and now the width will, will be as big as the parent layout so it will touch the margins so let's change it back to wrap content and the uh, raw content means that it will be as big as the content in it and the content is the text so uh, uh, if the size of the text if, ha if it has a lot of text uh, it will be big then it will uh, it will increase uh, to 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 match that text so if i go down here now and i change the text so i go down i scroll and i have the text hello world so this is the text that the text view has uh, let's go up because i don't know why it go down Let's select hello, hello world. Let's select the text view. Now let's change this text to something else. So let's put some text here. Now, as you can see, this increased as the as the text that was added to it. So this is what uh, wrap content means. So let's click back on that on the text view. Let's go down here and let's change it back to. To, to text view. So let's type here text view. And uh, if it's not changing, just uh, click uh, uh, here and uh, it will change. Now we have text view. And this is fine. You can also add another widget. You can add an image here. So if I take this and I drag it here, I can put it here. And now it opened this uh, drawable resources and this uh, allows us to pick an image because we we uh, draw the we drag there uh, an image so now it uh, wants us to choose an image so i'm going to choose this image and i'm click on okay and now this image is added here but so let's also constrain it vertical uh, horizontally first then vertically so let's push this down a little bit now if i want this uh, this uh, image to always be above the button we just drag this to our uh, button circle here so we drag that arrow there now let's push this a little up all right so what we did now here we added a text view a button and an image view and they they are all added inside a constraint layout and we added them using the palette so using the widgets that we have here we just drag them and we constrain them we change their properties here on the right hand side so this is one way to do the things the second way uh, this is one, one way to 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 add ui components the second uh, option is to go to directly to code and with the code you can achieve the same thing but you you'll have to type the xml code in order to 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 have uh, uh, what you had previously so now if i change this text view here at the text view because this is the uh, this is the take the xml code for the text view that you that uh, was displayed previously if i change this to hello world and now if i go back to design as you can see the change the text now is changed to hello world if I go to code and I go to the button XML code and uh, as you can see here, you have Android text. So this sets the text of the button. If I change this to login button and I go back to design, now the text is changed to login button and you can also add another uh, attribute here. So another property. So I can type here all, all, all caps and I press enter and by default all caps is set it to true so the the letters the text that is going to be displayed on the button is going to be uppercase so let's not uppercase the the text let's pass false so now if you go to design now the text is not upper uppercase so the exact same thing that uh, that we achieve using the design and dragging them here use, uh, changing their properties from here you can do the same thing here so you can add a text view you can add wrap content so how uh, was going to be the width the height you can make it visible invisible you can add text you can uh, constrain it as you can see here is constraint and uh, all of those uh, views all of those uh, that uh, are here the button the text view and the image view are inside this constraint layout this is the parent layout and uh, for the image i think uh, ah, so for the image we have here tools src compact and this is uh, the the 
the location of the image. So if you press, hold control and press enter, actually it didn't open, but uh, anyway. And you can also change the image here to another image using, uh, using the XML code. Now, I'm gonna end the video and see you in the next video. And uh, this XML uh, that we have here and also the design, uh, the design component, the code component, you can use uh, 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 either the code to add directly the code and to add properties to your uh, widgets, to your uh, views, to your UI components, or you can use the design. What you find, what you find uh, more uh, easy, that is uh, uh, what you should use. But I should add here now that because in Android things are changing very rapidly, they release something called Jetpack Compose, which basically uh, eliminates completely this XML and uh, the design. And we we create our uh, widgets, our UI components directly from the code. But you're gonna look that uh, you're gonna look at that in a separate in a future uh, uh, chapter. So I'm gonna end the video now and see you in the next video. And if you find this confusing. Uh, don't be. It's normal when you see this for the fir for the first time. Uh, play with the with the with the properties that we have here from on the XML. So from the code, play play with them from the, uh, with the with the design. Try to put another widget here to see what happens. Uh, constrain it and so on, because this is how uh, you learn. So I'm gonna end the video now and see you in the next video. Now let's look at other properties that we can use on our UI components. So let's say that I want to change the color of the text view. To do that, I'm going to go on the right hand side, make sure that uh, uh, the view is selected. And I'm going to go here, it says search, and I'm going to type color. And uh, while I'm typing, I have a few suggestions. We have text color, text color hint, text color link. So I'm going to choose this one, text color. And we'll click on this, and by when you, when you click on that, you, you have this palette. And now we can change, you can uh, provide a different color here. Let's say that I'm going to choose uh, a blue color. So let's choose this one. Let's press enter now. And let's close this. And now our uh, text view has the color blue. And uh, let's uh, go to the code now because I want to show you what you can do with the constraint layout. And this constraint layout that we have here, as I said, is the parent layout, is the layout when, when uh, which all of those uh, child uh, views are inside. So if I change here, uh, let's say that I add another attribute for our uh, constraint layout, if I type here background, and I'm going to type here uh, color, let's say, uh, so we put at color. And uh, let's go on our resources to, see, to now, now it's a good time to see how we can use uh, the resources. So go to values and we have colors. And uh, we have here um, the color, let's say, uh, purple. So this is the name, so the color of purple. And to, to get this color, we need to reference this name uh, in, uh, in our uh, in our XML code. So we type at color, we put uh, forward slash, and we type purple. And we have our suggestion that the purple that we saw in the colors XML file. So I'm going to press uh, enter. Now, if I go to design, now the entire uh, the entire background was changed to this color. And this is this uh, was changed to purple. This happened because the constraint layout is uh, the entire views and all the views, like the text view, the button, the image view, are uh, the child views are inside of uh, the constraint layout. So this is how we can do it uh, using the code. Again, it's up to you what uh, you can use. You can again, you can uh, you can do the same thing using uh, using um, directly. Uh, the, des the design, so you can click on uh, constraint, constraint layout and you can, ch you can change the color. So I'm gonna end the video now and see you in the next video. Now it's time to see how we can connect the code with the UI components. So how we can connect the code with the uh, layouts, with the buttons, with the text views, with the images. And to do that we need to use what is called r.java file. 
and uh, this uh, R, R the Java file, what is doing is connecting the, to the code with the UI component. This is basically what is doing. And you probably notice that you already have this R here. And what this R is doing now here is connecting the this set content view function with the layout activity that may. So when this when this uh, when uh, our app is launched, when this function is called set content view, R is gonna go inside the layout layout and is gonna take this activity that main and that is gonna be displayed uh, for the user to see. Now. Let's see how we can, uh, let's first create a new layout. So I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna create a new layout here. So I'm gonna click on, uh, I'm gonna click on this greater arrow in front of layout. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create a new layout. So we, uh, we go to new and we select this layout resource file. And I'm gonna call this layout, uh, let's say, uh, new layout. I'm gonna press okay. And it's created a new layout. Layout. I'm gonna put a button here. I'm gonna constrain it. So I'm gonna constrain it uh, horizontally and vertically. Now. What I said what previously was that this error that uh, layout and the set content view is gonna set the activity that main as the 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 uh, view that the user is gonna see when it launches the app. So when you go to, to it's gonna see this. But I'm, I want to have this. Uh, I want the user to see this this layout when it launches the app. And to do that, we, we change this activity that main. We change this, so we delete this, and we type here new layout and now if you run this code now you'll uh, this uh, when this set content view is gonna be called air that layout is gonna go inside the layouts that we defined here and it's gonna set it's gonna connect it's gonna uh, set the new layout that you create so now our uh, app is creating I right, saw so our app launch and now we have this new layout, new layout that we created uh, previously and we have the button here in the middle. Now it's time to see how we can connect the button that is inside our new layout with uh, the code. And to do that, first I'm gonna go inside our new layout. I'm gonna hide the emulator because I don't need the emulator and I'm gonna go to design. And one important thing to understand is that all the widgets that we have here, all the UI components are objects. So we can represent them in code. We can create a button object and we can connect it with the button UI object that is here. So, and but how to connect them? What, what, uh, how, how, how are we gonna connect them? Because here, when, when you connected the layout, here we use the air that layout, the new layout. And to connect the button with the button object that you're gonna create, the but so to, to to connect the button object UI with the button object that you're gonna create, you need to give an ID. And I think by default that already has an ID. And this is the ID. The ID is button. So we're gonna use this ID to connect the button that we have here with a button object, the button object UI, with a button object that we're gonna create here. So I'm gonna create here a button uh, object and I'm gonna type private latent it var button button. Now I'm gonna go down here and here I'm gonna type button And now I'm gonna use a function called find view by ID. And this function is the function which is gonna 
connect with uh, using the r.java file is gonna connect our button object that we created above with our button object that uh, is inside our new layout so i'm gonna type here find view by id i'm gonna type here r so the the thing that connects the the the, the code with the ui r that id button so we have our button here so if I hold control and I press click on this, it uh, took me inside here because it knows that this, we are uh, referencing this button. So now the button that we created here, it's connected with the button UI that we have uh, that we have uh, that we have here. So those now are connected, and because they are now now connected, now I can do because it's, it's an object. I can uh, call functions on this button. So I can type here button dot text. I'm gonna put equals. I'm gonna put here let's say uh, login button. So if we rerun this. Select terminate. Now we have the text login button and we can call another function. We can say here button that uh, text or button that color. I don't know what it was that called. I, I don't uh, remember uh, how uh, that was called, but you can call uh, more function on this button, like uh, changing the color and so on. So this is how you can connect a UI component object with an object that you create in your code using this function, find view by ID and the R uh, Java resource file. So this is our discussion uh, about about uh, uh, the R that resources file and how you can connect uh, UI objects with uh, button or with objects in our code. So see you in the next video. Now it's time to look at strings, but first let me show you how you can change the color of the text of the button because previously I forgot how that function was called. So we go down here, we type button dot set text color, and here we type color dot let's say green. Now I'm gonna click not on this uh, run up i'm going to click on this apply changes and restart activity so that you don't uh, rerun our app so now we wait a little bit and we get uh, now the the text login button green so now i'm going to delete this because you don't uh, i i just wanted to show you how you can do this so i'm going to delete this i'm going to apply the changes now back now uh, i'm going to go this is opened, but I'm gonna go inside the strings uh, uh, file. So I'm gonna click on values. So I'm gonna create arrow, arrow, and I'm gonna go inside the strings. And here, here is the place where we're gonna define all of our strings. All the text that you want to have displayed in our app is should be defined here. And uh, now you may, be, you may be wondering why. Um, let's say that uh, you have this uh, button text login button called in many places and uh, if uh, let's say that you want to change the text and the text is hardcore like this so you type directly the code you'll have to do you have to go in all the places where you type the code and type uh, a different code but if we put our code here so so we go down here we add opening tag we type string and now we need to give an ID because we're going to use this ID to call this uh, string later. So I'm going to call this button text. And uh, it's going to have... Uh, and here, between uh, those two, I'm going to put the text. And the text is going to be... Let's see what text we had previously here. Login button. So I'm going to type here, login button. Now I'm, I'm gonna go inside the main activity and now instead of uh, having this text type here, uh, I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna type get, so type get string 
and now you pass the ID R dot and now we are going inside the string uh, XML files so it's string dot button text so now uh, it's gonna use the text which is inside the string XML file that uh, we defined and now uh, if you think about if you are using this uh, this text in many places and uh, you want to change the value of uh, of the text uh, if you hardcore the text if you type the text yourself you'll have to change the text in every place but because we, we are using the the text which is inside the string uh, xml file we only need to do we only need to go here we change the text here and it will be uh, it will be reflected in all the places where we use uh, are the string that button text so this is why it's good to use uh, strings in this way. So now I'm gonna end the video and see you in the next video. Now it's time to look at the manifest file. So I'm gonna go on the left hand side. I'm gonna click on this greater arrow in front of manifest. And I'm gonna double click on this android.manifest file. And uh, this opened the, the manifest file for us. And uh, what we have here is also XML. And at the root here we have manifest. Now, what the manifest file allows us to do is to define the structure of our application. So we can define what our application can do or uh, can't do. So this is what uh, the manifest file basically allows us to do. And inside the manifest file, we have this application. And inside the application, we have an activity. And first, let's look at uh, the first uh, property that we have here and this is allow backup and basically what this is gonna do is is after you pu publish your app and it's uh, on a real phone uh, that uh, app can can be backed up so this what this is this what this is doing by having true here next we have an icon and uh, the icon is uh, as you can see on the left hand side here the icon that we looked uh, in our previous video when we look at uh, meet map uh, uh, at this file at this folder here and uh, next we have um, uh, app and this as you can see if i click on this we have add string app that name and if I, if I hold control and press enter it took me here inside this string that is defined here so it's using the app text that is defined in this uh, string uh, uh, XML file. So this is what uh, that is doing. Here we have the round icon. So we have uh, again the, the icon that we talked about, but we have the right round icon. Uh, next we have this thing, but we're not interested in this. And uh, next we have this thing called Android theme. And this is basically uh, the theme of the entire application. This theme is going to be also the theme for all the activities that we're going to create because we can create more than one activity. We can have more activities because now if I go down here, as you can see, we are inside the application, um, the application node and inside the application node, we have another node here called activity and Inside the activity, we have Android name and we have main that activity. So what we are doing here is, is we are registering in our application the main activity that we created. This is basically what this is doing. Next, we have this um, thing called intent filter. And uh, what this basically is doing, because here we have an action and we have this Android that intent that action that main. What this is basically doing, because we have also here category and have Android that intent that category lancer. What uh, this intent filter, which is inside the activity, the activity that we attach here, main activity, what this is gonna do, when you run your app for the first time and uh, suppose that you have two activities, because if inside the main uh, activity, inside the manifest file of the where you have defined uh, the main activity, you have this intent filter and we have uh, those uh, specific uh, action here under it that intent action that main. What this is going to do is that is going to open the main activity as the first screen. So it will not, not open the second activity if you have a second activity. And uh, if you move this intent, intent filter and we'll do this in, uh, in a future video, 
in another activity, it's not gonna open the main activity first. It's gonna open another activity. So this is what what uh, what we have here. And uh, also we have here uh, metadata, but uh, this is not uh, we're not not interested about uh, this now. And uh, then we have uh, the node closing, and we have. Uh, our uh, main activity here defined. So this is what the manifest file is doing. Another important thing that we can do in manifest is that we can ask for permissions. So I can go up here and let's say that you want to use the internet connection. When uh, you will do that, you will need to first ask for permission. So Another thing that you can do is that you can ask for permissions and the permission can be to ask for uh, uh, to, to access the internet connection to to access the camera or uh, I don't know to, to do all kind of things and uh, in that case you have to explicitly type here use this permission so I'm gonna open a tag here and we type use permission and I press enter and now here we have a lot of uh, uh, options. So we have access course location. So you can use this permission to ask for the location. So you're gonna, you, and you saw probably when you, uh, you when you used uh, your apps on your phone that uh, when you uh, it's using the location, it's asking you if you allow the, uh, that app to use the location. And this is where we define uh, those things. So in order to for our app to be able to get the location, we need to. Uh, define the permission here and you also need to wrote, wrote some code but I'm gonna see that we're gonna see how to do that in the next video so we have a lot of uh, things here like network stake notification policy surface free Wi-Fi state and manager uh, and many things so this is our discussion about manifest file and see you in the next see you in the next video but before we end our video let's first uh, see what this support TCRTL is doing because uh, I did a search and what actually that is doing is uh, if you look on Stack Overflow somebody asked what uh, that is doing so what is the use of Android support TCRTL equal to true and uh, if you look at this answer saying if you are building an app in Arabic or or Hebrew or uh, any language that is writ uh, written from right to left you should use you set Android support TCRTL to true that's how you tell the lay layout to be from right to left and the default value of this attribute is false but in our case uh, was uh, was set it to true so this is what this support uh, rtl is doing and uh, if uh, uh, there are things that i omitted here you can uh, you can uh, search uh, you can do a, a simple search on stack overflow and you'll find uh, an answer so i thought that it's a good idea to sh to also to tell you what this is doing so now i'm gonna end the video and see you in the next video all right so now that we have an idea what a button and what a text view is let's start building a little more complex app and uh, i'm gonna delete this code because i don't need this code because we're gonna create another uh, button or we're gonna use the button from our uh, activity that made that xml so i'm gonna click on this and uh, it took me inside the code inside the XML code. Let's click on design and let's change this background. So let's click back on code and let's delete this background because we don't need this background. So let's delete this background. So uh, another thing is that uh, uh, you can see this in, uh, in uh, I, I show you that you can use the design and the code, but you can also use split and you can have both that the XML code on the left hand side and you can have the design on the right hand side. So this is uh, nice to know. And this is very beautiful to have in this way. I'm going to click back on design and uh, I'm going to delete this image view and you can delete it from here. So you can right click on it and delete. And now it's deleted. Let's press Ctrl Z to see if I can put it back. Okay, so we have it back or you can delete it from uh, from here so you go here and we delete the, so here we have the opening tag and we delete the image so we delete this and now when I go back to design the image is gone now let's also make this text view a little bit more so a little bit uh, bigger so let's type here size again you can do this, uh, this uh, thing from uh, from um, 
uh, from the code, but I'm going to use uh, the design. So we have text size and the text size is 14 SP. So let's change it to, let's say 24 SP. All right, so now our text is bigger. We have our text here. Let's push this button a little bit down. Now, I'm going to go back uh, to main activity and I'm going to go inside the strings because I want to change the text of the button. So I'm going to change the text of the button to show. So we type here show. And now I'm going to go back inside the main activity and let's go back uh, inside the activity that main.xml because we need to give uh, some ideas to our buttons and to our uh, and to our uh, uh, to our text view so that we can reference it. So we can also use again the code or the design. I'm going to use the design. So I'm going to click on the text view. So let's uh, let's add an ID to the text view. So I'm going to type here ID. And now the ID is uh, this text view. And let's change it to my text view. So my text view. All right. So this is the new ID. And let's also change the ID for the for the button that we have here. And now the the ID for the button is this button six. And let's change it to my button. All right. Let's go to code to see that we have. Click on refactor. We have to refactor the. And here we don't have my text view because I didn't click on refactor previously. So let's go to to the text view again. And uh, let's type here my text view and we press enter. And now it's asking us if you want to refactor the, the, the ID, the name of the ID. So I'm going to click on refactor. So this is why it was, was it, this is why it wasn't changed previously. Now I'm going to go inside the main activity and now I'm going to reference the button and the text view and I'm going to connect the button object with the uh, button uh, widget and the text object with the text uh, widget. So I'm going to type here first private latent it. So latent initializer my button is going to be of type button. And here I'm going to type again private latent it. And I'm going to type here my text view. And now it's good. this is going to be a text view. So I'm going to put the type text view. So we type here text view. You choose this one. Now we need to connect the button and the text view. And to do that, we need to use the find view, find view by ID function to connect them. So I'm going to type here my button. So type my button and put equals and we type here find view by ID. And now we use the R to reference the ID. So to connect the resource to the resources of so R that ID that and we have the ID my button. Let's also there is a problem here. Okay, uh, the problem is that uh, this uh, button that we have here is inside the activity that main XML, but here we are setting the content view for the new with the new layout. So uh, we can it can find find uh, this. This is why you have here an error. So if I change this now to activity that main that XML where the button is, now the error should disappear. So let's type again r dot id dot my button. And so we still have an error. All right, so now uh, everything works. We didn't have the error. We didn't have the warning here because now we connected uh, we 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 referenced the activity that main uh, layout where the my button uh, were this button is. Now I'm going to go down here. I'm going to type my text view, my text view, 
I'm going to put equals and I'm going to type again find view by id r dot id dot my text view now I'm going to go back inside the activity dot main let's go back let's go to design I'm going to click on uh, the text view and let's make the text view invisible so let's type here visibility and now uh, it's set it to visible but let's uh, change it to invisible So now our text, text view is invisible. And uh, so now we, we created our button and our text view and we have connected them with the UI component. So you connected them with the, with, with the, with the widgets that uh, we created. And next we're gonna, we're gonna click on the button. And when we're gonna click on the button, we're gonna make the text view visible and we're gonna change the text uh, of the text view going to add some text to the text view and we're going to do that in the next video. Now it's time to see how we can uh, handle clicks on our button so that when you click on our button a particular section of code is going to be executed. In our case when we're going to click on the button that we have in activity main.xml, the, this button, when we click on this button we want to make the text view that is here visible and we want to change the text of the text view and this is what we're going to do. And uh, First, let's first change the text of the button because now it says login button. And uh, to do that, I'm gonna go down here and I will type my button. Press enter, we put equals, and uh, now I'm gonna go inside the strings file because there I uh, declare the string. And we have this button text the ID and I change it here the text to show because uh, previously you saw me that uh, you saw that here it was a different text. And uh, now I'll go back to main activity and now if I type here R, actually here it should say M that button that text so we're setting the text of the button equals and if, here if I type R that string that uh, button text have an underline and we have an error and it says type mismatch required uh, char sequence and found int this is because this is an integer address so this is not the actual string this is an address to the string and in order to get the the text with with uh, that is at this address we need to use the get string function which is gonna get the string the text at that address so we type get string and we type here r that string that button text. So now if I go in activity.main, you should... Uh... Anyway, this uh, will be changed when you run our, uh, when you run our uh, app. Now, how we can uh, handle clicks on our uh, button? To handle clicks on our button, you go on the attributes, you go on the right hand side and you go down. And while I'm going down, you go, you go, you go. And uh, you see that we have this thing on click and if here we need to define the name of a function and when we're going to click on the button the function is going to be is going to be called so if i uh, type here show a message now i will create this function inside the main activity and when i will click on the button this function is going to be called so i'm going to go inside the main activity and i will go down here and i'll type fun show message it should have the same name that we defined uh, in the design so show message parenthesis and now we're gonna say here uh, m my text view dot visibility equals view dot visible so we make first the button, the text view visible because it's invisible and now we change the text. So I'm going to type here my text view dot text and now I'm going to hard code the text. I'm going to type directly the code but I'm going to create a string uh, resource for this. So I'm going to type here hello Alex. Now if I go back here, nothing happen because this code is going to be executed when you type when you click on the button and 
we also need to define here a parameter called view because the button that we, we created is a view and if you don't define here the, uh, the parameter view uh, our app will crash so look if I run this look what happens so if I run this Alright, so now we have uh, our button, we have our app opened, and if I click on the button, the app crashes because we didn't pass the view here. Uh, so if I put here view of type view, this one. Now if I run this app again, Now the app opened. Now when I click on the show button, look what happens. We have the text being visible and then we have the text, uh, the text Hello Alex uh, 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 here. So this is one way to handle clicks on the button. There is another way to, to handle clicks and I'm going to show you how to do that uh, now. So the other way of handling clicks on our uh, widgets, because you can handle clicks not only on uh, on uh, the button but on all the widgets and why we can handle clicks on all the widgets that is because if you go here activity.main let's hide the emulator all the widgets that we have here the buttons the uh, the text views all of those they, they are inheriting from a, a class called view and the class view has a lot of functions a lot of pro a lot of functions uh, which uh, which uh, the uh, class the, the class which are inheriting the uh, derive class are having access to all of that functionality so this is why you can handle clicks on almost any widget actually on any widget and uh, what we can do here instead of declaring this uh, function here and uh, and uh, doing in this way, what I can do is I can attach an event listener to the button. So more specifically, we can attach, I can attach one click listener on our uh, my button. And uh, what that is going to do when you're going to click on the button, the code is that is going to be in the, because we're going to use what is called, uh, actually we talked about this in our first part of the course, we're going to use a Lambda in order to to define the body of the uh, the listener so i'm going to type here my button and i type here dot and i type set and i have some suggestions on so we type on click so on click listener and we choose this one which has this uh, lambda that that is here so i'm going to press enter and now when we're going to click on the my button now the code which is inside this lambda is going to be executed so this is in, and this is the my my prefer my preferred way of of handling clicks and this is my suggestion for you to use because it's um, it's uh, easier and uh, more concise now now I'll I'll type the same code here so I'm going to type here uh, my text view that visible that visibility equals to view that visible and uh, my text view that text and uh, now i'm going to create a resource string so i'm going to go inside the strings i'm going to create another string here i'm going to go down i'm going to open the tags i'm going to type string i'm going to call it uh, text uh, view text and it's going to say hello Alex. Now we go back inside the main activity and here we type get string to get the string from the, 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 the address. So I'm going to type r dot string dot text view text. So now if you run this, our 
our uh, app opened and if I click on the show button, we have hello Alex and so it's executed the code inside the Lambda because we set on click listener. So this will listen to clicks on the button and it's going to execute the code inside the Lambda, which is to make the text view visible and to 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 set some text to the text view. So this is our discussion. My suggestion is to use uh, the set on click listener whenever you want to handle clicks on uh, your widgets. And um, see you in the next video where we're going to uh, take a look at another widget. Very important. Now it's time to look at another widget that you can use in Android and that is an edit text. And uh, with an edit text you can type text from the keyboard or from the phone and uh, you can do, you can get that text, you can do whatever you want to do with that text. So um, I'm going to go inside the activity.main and to add an edit text we go here on the left hand side, make sure that text is selected and we drag this one called plain text and I'm going to put it above the login button. But in order to stay above the login button, let's uh, first constrain it uh, horizontally and then vertically. So let's constrain it. So now it will stay always above the button. And let's change this text because now it has this text name. So let's, let's, change, let's delete this and uh, let's add a hint. And the hint is what the user is going to see is some gray out uh, te text which, which the user is going to see. So let's type here, enter your name for the hint. So we have, all right? So now we have enter your name. Now let's go back inside the main activity and now we need to create an object. So I'm going to type here private. Let's push this a little bit down. Return it var edit text and uh, we type for the type edit text also let's give it an ID so let's click on ID let's search let's type ID Okay, so let's change the ID to only edit text. Let's put uh, with uh, uppercase T. And let's go back into, let's click on refactor. And let's go back inside the main activity. Now, I'm going to go down here because inside the onCreate function is where we're going to set up our, uh, all of our uh, widgets. So down here, I'm going to type uh, edit text equals I'm going to type find view by id r dot id dot edit text so now we are we have uh, the edit text uh, connected with uh, with uh, all right so now we have the edit text co connected with the but with the edit text that we created above here so let's press ctrl z because i messed up the code all right, now what I, I want to do is, uh, because now if you run this, so let's run uh, our app. Click on terminate. So we have our text and we have the hint, enter our name, let's change the hint because uh, I typed uh, T two times there, so let's go here. Let's type hint. Let's uh, delete a T. Let's press enter. Let's go back. Let's run our app again. Click on terminate. And we have enter your name. And now here you can type uh, you can type text. As you can see. You can type it directly from the keyboard or from here. So we type here Alex. Now let's see how we can get the text that we type here and we can how we can display then that text inside our uh, on our uh, text view. 
And to do that, I'm gonna go inside the my button because we're gonna show the text, we're gonna get the text when I'm gonna click on the show button and I'm gonna go here and I will type val. So I'll, I'll declare a variable call input. So we're gonna get the input text, put equals, and here I'm gonna type edit text dot text. So now this uh, edit text dot text is gonna return the text that the user typed here. So whatever text you type here is gonna be returned and it's gonna be uh, assigned to the variable input. So now what we can do is that you can delete this get string and add a string that takes you text because we're not gonna get the text from our strings XML. I'm gonna assign the input that is passed to us from the from the keyboard on from. So uh, now if I run this up, and uh, if I type here Alex. And I press show. Now it's showing Alex. So it's taken the text, which is returned by this. It's it's assigned to the variable, and then this is assigned to our text view text, and we see here uh, Alex. But what I don't like is that if you hover over, it says that this is an edit editable. It's not a string. So you, we didn't run into a problem because we, we uh, passed this uh, editable and not a string. But I prefer to put here. Uh, to string in order to convert that from a, from the different format from the format of editable to a string. So now if you hover over, now this is a string. Now if you run this up again, it will uh, work the same. So if I type here again, uh, Alex get Alex. But now we don't have that underline and, and I think that was probably because of the editable. So now I converted that to, uh, to string. So now it's a string. But uh, our app has a problem. What if you don't pass anything? So not here. So not here. So let's press control Z. What if I uh, rerun this app? Click on terminate. And uh, what if I don't type any text here and I click on show what is going to happen? Uh, so let's see. So when I type on, when I uh, click on show, nothing happens because uh, uh, we, we didn't pass any uh, any kind of uh, of text. We didn't type any kind of text here. So our, we didn't assign any text to our uh, to our text view text. But a better way to write this code would be to check to see whatever the input is empty or not and if it's empty to say to the user to enter some text so let's do, let's do that do that and to do that i'm gonna go up here and i'm gonna type if i'm gonna type here edit text dot text dot to string so the input the what the user typed is empty so or is blank you can use that one if you want is empty and i'm gonna put the logical not operator in front so if it's not empty so let's pr press enter and now it's we have an underline here because we can uh, we can uh, replace it with the negation it's uh, it's not empty but let's uh, leave it like this or let's change it to it's bl blank is blank and we have the same underline so let's put this empty so now what we're checking here is if you, the user types something uh, there then I'm gonna take this code and I'm gonna put it inside the if I'm gonna take this code and I'm gonna put it inside the if and uh, I'm gonna add an else part so else so if the user didn't type anything then let, I'm gonna create a string here so I'm gonna create a string here which is gonna be edit uh, text or um, text view text message and it's gonna say uh, please enter 
some text. And now I'm going to use this ID. I'm going to go inside the main activity and here we're going to type text view text. Text view, my text view, dot text. I'm going to put equals. So I'm going to type get string and I'm going to the, str the string that we created uh, previously. So I'm going to type here r dot string dot text view text message. So uh, let's hide the emulator to to, to to think about what what we have here. So first we check we check to see if we have an, we have input from the te from the edit text. So what this is what you're doing here. So if this is not uh, empty, then I'm gonna assign that text to the variable. I'm gonna make the the text view visible and uh, and uh, you're gonna assign uh, that text to the text view. Let's also make it visible here. Else, if the uh, the text if the the, the the we didn't type anything inside the edit text, we're gonna make the text view visible. But we're gonna uh, um, out, so let's type here my text view. We're gonna make the text view visible, but uh, gonna, it's gonna have the message that uh, you please uh, you enter some text. So that, that visibility, you type here view that visible. So now if you run this, so let's first type Alex. So let's click on show. We have Alex. Now let's delete the text and let's uh, not, not pass anything. So I'm going to click on show and now it's executed the else part. It make uh, it made the the text view visible and it said please enter some text and this is very very beautiful we have uh, even though it's a simple app we, we, we have uh, we have something so uh, this is our discussion about edit text and play with this try to do different things and um, so on so i'm gonna end the video now and see you in the next video now it's time to create an app which is gonna convert inches to centimeters but first let's create a new project so i'm gonna go here on the left hand side on the top I'm going to click on file, I'm going to go to new and click on new project. We're going to select an empty activity here. Click on next. I'm going to call this inches to centimeters. And uh, I'm going to click on finish, we'll let the language Kotlin and we'll let also this location by default. So I'm going to click on finish. Now our uh, program is going to be created. All right, now our project is ready and uh, the first thing that uh, we need to do is to configure the activity main.xml to add the widgets for uh, for our uh, program that we're going to create. So I will go inside the activity main.xml and uh, here I'm going to add first an image up here. So, uh, but first let's add the image here inside the drawable. So click on resource on drawable and actually we cannot uh, add it from home. Click on uh, on uh, project manager and here we have drawable color layout meme map and click on this plus button because we're going to add an image from our uh, 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 PC. So I'm going to click on this plus button and we select uh, this import drawable, drawable. So I'm going to click on that and we select the, this image from the desktop. So I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to click on next and I'm going to click on import. 
and now we have the image inside, inside our drawables folder let's click back on projects let's go inside the resources and inside the drawable and now we have our image here so if you double click you see that we have this image here all right the first thing that uh, that we need to do let's delete this text view because i will add it later let's go inside the code to delete it because All right, so the first thing that we need is an image view. So we can uh, search it from here and we can type image, image view, or uh, you can select it from here because it's here. So I'm gonna select this image view and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it here. And when I did that, it opened uh, the, the, this uh, window for me and it also uh, selected the drawable folder because now we can add an image to the image view that we, we, uh, that we added there. So I'm gonna select this image. I'm gonna click on okay. All right, so now we have our uh, image. Let's make it uh, smaller. So uh, let's make this image smaller. And let's bring it up. Let's add the constraints. Let's constrain it also vertically. All right, so now I have our image view. I'm gonna let it there. The next thing that we need is an edit text because we're gonna type uh, our inches in our edit text. So we type here edit text and we select this plain text. This is an edit text. We we'll put it below here. I'm gonna constrain it this also horizontally and it's gonna be below this uh, image. So let's push it down a little bit to constrain it. All right. Next, I'm gonna add a button, which is gonna be used to click to convert the, the input that we're gonna type the inches into centimeters. So I'm gonna take this button, I'm gonna drag it here, I'm gonna put it below the, the edit text. I'm gonna constrain this. Actually, let's constrain now this here. So it's always gonna be above our button. And let's also add an, a text view which is gonna display the converted uh, inches. So we type text view and have a text view here. Select the text view and add it here below. So we have our text view, let's constrain it. So you constrain it to be below the button. Let's also constrain the button. For the tether is a night. So let me try to constrain the button again but I can't, I don't know why. Anyway, I'll leave it like this. I'll uh, push this, uh, te this text view up a little bit. And now this looks uh, beautiful. We have our text view. Now let's uh, look at the properties of our widget. So let's start with the edit text and let's uh, first uh, change the ID to ID. Let's change the ID to edit edit text inches and let's uh, click on refactor let's delete the id let's also change the the text because we don't need that text so i'm gonna go down here so we don't need this text name but we want a hint so what the user is gonna see when it's gonna open the app. So we're gonna see here enter inches. 
So now we have enter inches, we have the button, let's also click on the button to, to change the properties a little bit. So let's give it an ID first, so I'm going to type here ID and let's call it uh, button convert. Let's click on refactor to refactor. Let's delete the ID. Now let's uh, give it a different text. But let's go in the inside the values inside the strings. So I'm going to create a new string here. And I'm going to call it button convert. And uh, it's going to say convert. Now I'm going to go on inside the activity main dot XML. And uh, here for the for the text, let me make sure that I have the button selected. For the text, I'll go down. So here we have the text and here I'm going to type add string and I'm going to reference our uh, string that we created button convert and select this one. So now we have uh, the text convert and here we have the text view and uh, for the text view, let's see what we have here. Let's also give an ID to the text view. Let's call it. Uh, so let's click here. Let's type ID. And let's call it um, text view con convert. So let's let's press enter. Click on refactor. And now we have our uh, widgets uh, set up. Now let's run this to see how it looks. So I'm going to run this. Alright, so we have uh, our uh, our uh, app open, but the button uh, is uh, it's up it's up because I didn't constrain the button. So let's constrain the button. So I'm gonna click on this button and let's constrain it because uh, I can't constrain it in relation with the edit text and with the text view. I'm gonna constrain it directly here, horizontal, uh, vertically. So I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna drag here. And I'm going to put the button here. And now it's going to stay there. Let's run this again. All right, so now everything looks fine, but we have the text button and I don't know why. Let me go here, but uh, we're going to change this in the next video. But now everything is fine. We have uh, our uh, our uh, edit text, we have our button and we have uh, our text view, which is going to display the converted uh, uh, the converted inches into inches into centimeters. And let's say let's see how we can change the text of the button for whatever reason that wasn't changed. I don't know why. So let's um, Let's delete this. Let's go down here. So we have um, string button convert, but why is not? Uh, actually, it should be it should be it should be here, not uh, here. So here we need to put our our text, our address. So let's delete this. Let me check first something. So we type string button convert. We run our app again. Alright, so now everything looks fine. Our uh, our app is ready to, to to add the code to add the logic, which is gonna uh, convert the inches into centimeters. So I will do that in the next video.
Now it's time to add the logic which is going to convert our inches into centimeters. But first we need to connect our uh, widgets with the uh, objects that we're going to create here. So first we need to create, we have three widgets, first we need to create an edit text. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to type private, latent it, entered. inches edit text or let's keep it all only as enter inches and it's going to be of type edit text so we type edit text here then we have a button latent it uh, and it's called convert and I'll call, I'll call it convert button and it's going to be of type button and next we have a text view and then the text view is uh, the text view that is going to show the converted uh, uh, inches so I'm going to type here private latent it var text view inches let's actually call it text view centimeters and it's going to be of type text view now let's uh, connect them with their ID so I'm gonna type here first uh, enter inches or edit text equals to find view by ID r dot ID dot edit text inches then I'm gonna type uh, convert button equals find view by ID r that id that button convert and then gonna type uh, text views centimeters equals find view by id r dot id that text view convert is called so we have uh, an underline here because we should call this convert so let's change it there and there also all right so now we have our uh, widgets um, connected with we have our objects connected with the widgets that we have here now let's see how uh, many centimeters is an inch because we're going to use that value to convert our inches into centimeters so i'm gonna uh, close this and i'm gonna open my browser i'll go to google and i'm gonna type here one one inch so one inch is 2.54 centimeters so let's copy this let's copy this value let's close the browser and let's open uh, android studio back and let's add uh, that value here so i'm gonna type here uh, private um, let's call it val because we're, gonna, we're not gonna change this value um, inch Let's call it value and we're going to sign that 2.54 centimeters. Now let's set on click uh, listener on our uh, uh, convert button because when we're going to click on the convert button we're going to convert uh, the inches into centimeters. So set on click listener we choose this one with the lambda and uh, before we do that let's first go back to activity.main because now when you will run your app you'll see the text text view but i don't want to have that to text so let's delete the text so let's make sure that we have text view selected and let's delete the text all right so now it's fine now to convert our uh, inches into centimeters, we need to first check to see if the input, again, that the user typed is not empty. So I'm going to put here if enter inches dot text dot to string dot is not empty then I'm gonna add the logic to convert uh, the the 
not the number the inches that he that the, the, the inches that the user type into centimeters so i'm going to press enter and what we're going to do here i'm going to create uh, a variable called result and here we're going to type enter inches dot text dot to string and now we need to also convert this into um, a number because this is text that we have here so we need to convert this into a number so i'm going to put again dot and we type two not that two double and now our text that is going to be type is going to be converted into a double and we're going to multiply that we're going to multiply that by our inch value so type here inch value then we're going to call our text view centimeters and we're going to start text and it's going to be equal to result again we need to convert uh, this now into a string because now this is uh, if you hover over this is uh, a double and here we can only pass text to the text view so let's put that to string and that is going to convert it to string let's add an else part so if uh, the the edit text it's uh, it's uh, empty and uh, it press the convert button we're going to say uh, um, text view text centimeters dot text and we're going to add the text here let's call it string and it's going to be text i'm going to call it text and i'm going to say please enter a number i'm going to go back inside the main activity i'm not going to type here get string r dot string dot text all right so now our logic is uh, fine it will uh, work so now if you run this Click on terminate. All right, so let's type something. Let's type here 10 inches to see what we get. So let's click on convert and we get 25.4. And is this uh, value that we have here? So uh, now let's actually put one inch to, to. So let's press Control Z here because I. So let's uh, type here only one inch to see what we get. So I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna type one inch. And I'm gonna type convert, and we get 2.54, the value that we have here. So what is the value of an inch in centimeters? So. Our code works fine, but uh, what I don't like is, again, I deleted the code, so let's press Ctrl Z. What I don't like is that when this uh, keyboard is opened, you have here text. So if I type here this thing, look what happens. It crashes our app. So we need to make, uh, make sure that only numbers are gonna be showed in the keyboard. And to do that, to go inside activity.main, we hide the emulator go inside the code we can do this from the design but i'm gonna go inside the code and here we have uh, an attribute called input type and here we can pass numbers so when the keyboard is gonna be shown that input is only gonna be numbers so i'm gonna type number so now if you run our code So now when I click on the edit text, now we have, we only have numbers, we don't have uh, the characters. And this is better, this is uh, better because now we don't run in that area where you pass strings with, uh, when, instead of numbers. We click on convert and let's make this uh, text view a little bit bigger. I'm gonna go also inside the, the, um, the code. So where is the text view? The text view is 
here so let's type here text size and here we're gonna type uh, let's say 20 SP so if you run this again or you apply the changes now if you click on convert now we have the text uh, a little bit bigger and we can increase this if you want now I'm gonna end the video and uh, see you in the next video now it's time to create another app and this app is gonna be called change color and uh, it's gonna have a button which one clicked is gonna change the background of uh, of uh, the view so let's uh, first open Android studio let's create a new project let's select empty activity here and click on next let's call it change color and let's click on finish now our project is going to be created all right so now let's uh, set up the uh, xml uh, file so i'm going to go inside the code because i'm going to add here a button so i'm going to delete this text view and i will add a uh, what's what's called a floating action button so i'm going to select this one so we we'll put opening tag and uh, for the width i'm going to type 200 dp and for the height also 200 dp let's close the tag uh, let's also give a background color so let's type background uh, Tint. So let's type color run color slash purple and now we have this in red because it's not constrained so let's constrain it from design so this is our button let's put it uh, in the middle so let's constrain uh, this vertically first then horizontally so now our button will stay in the middle and uh, with the uh, uh, floating action button we cannot put text on it so we cannot put a text like uh, click me or anything here but I'm gonna keep it uh, as it is because we don't need to put any text now what we want to achieve is to when to, if we click on this button to change this background and if you click on this background so if i click now you can see that this is selected uh, you see this by the color that we have here and the constraint layout is selected so what you need to do is to go inside the code and give an id to the constraint layout because the constraint layout is also a view is a ui component so remember that discussion that we had about the view and the, the hierarchy and the inheritance so all the views uh, are gonna have uh, the functions uh, that the, the, the view parent class is gonna have so here you can put an ID and you can reference this uh, constraint layout uh, later so let's call it uh, view I'm gonna call it simply view and now we can call this later and can change its color so now I'm gonna go inside the main activity I'm gonna type private later it and it's gonna be a view so it's gonna be of type view and now we need to import that another private later need var and now we're gonna uh, wanna, uh, we are going to create a button so type here button of type button now let's connect those objects with the UI components so I'm gonna go here and I will type view equals find view by ID r dot ID dot view so the constraint now that we had there then I'm gonna type button 
equals find view by id r dot id dot actually we need to give uh, an id to the button so let's give an id to the button so i'm gonna type here id <laughs> And let's call it uh, button change. So let's type here button but we have this underline so I don't know why. So I uh, don't know why we, we did uh, have that uh, underline. Uh, maybe it was a compile uh, uh, error, but uh, it uh, simply disappeared. So now it's uh, working. So now let's add, let's attach uh, on click listener to our button. So button that set on click listener. I'm gonna press enter. And I'm gonna type here view dot set background color and what I hear color dot red let's say so now if I run this So for whatever reason it crashed, so let's see, let's go in the run to see. So we see, go here. All right, so the problem is uh, that we should uh, type here for the type, not a button, but a floating uh, action button. So floating action button. This is why you got that error. So now if you run this again. Now it didn't crash. And if I click on this uh, floating action button, now the background color is changed to red. And uh, in the next video, we're gonna see how we can, how to change this, how when you click on this uh, button, the color is gonna be changed, uh, is gonna be changed uh, randomly. Now it's time to see how we can change the background color of our uh, app randomly. And for that we first need to create an array of colors. And now you may be wondering how we can create an array of colors, uh, how we can put colors into an array. And we can do that because colors, uh, when you type uh, color.red, actually, uh, actually that is an integer. So if I go here, let's say, as you can see, this is an integer. So we can uh, use those uh, those those integers to uh, because to for the color black we have this integer for the color blue we have this integer and we can use those integers to put them into an uh, into an array so I can type here uh, private val colors and I'm gonna put equals array of and I'm gonna type here color that red um, color dot white color dot gray color dot green color dot magenta color dot black color that let's see where is the yellow color so color that yellow and uh, this is enough now how we can change this uh, background color randomly we first need uh, a way to get the color so to get the color from here in, uh, to get it randomly but to get you need to get it from the array first so what we need to do is we type here colors we put uh, um, square brackets, we put square brackets. And here I'm gonna type random 
because we're going to use this uh, this class called random to generate uh, random numbers and uh, you can specify a range for the for the random number so to, to generate let's say a random number f between uh, 0 and 10 or between in our case uh, the color red and the color yellow and for that uh, is, as I said uh, there is the corresponding uh, numbers so I'm going to type random dot so you put that here dot next int and inside the next into specify the range so uh, from uh, what uh, number to what number we're gonna generate numbers so we're gonna type here colors dot size so this will generate a, run, a, a random number this line of code will generate a random number between uh, the the first uh, index that we have here to the last index and then we're gonna get that color using the colors array inside the, we get that color back and then then and then we we put that color to our uh, view background so now if you run this code click on terminate Now if you click on the button and you click again, now the color as you can see is are the change randomly. And this is uh, very nice. So this uh, this is a simple app but it's very beautiful. You can show it to your friends. So it generates a random uh, random color using one simple line of code that we have uh, that we have here. So this line of code. So now I'm going to end the video and see you in the next video. Now it's time to continue our discussion about Android and in this video we're going to look at another widget called Radio Button. So let's create a new project, select Empty Activity, click on Next and let's call it Radio Buttons. And click on Finish to create a project. Right now, right now our project is created. Let's go inside activity.main, take .xml. Let's wait a little bit, and let's delete this text view because we don't need this text view. And let's go back to design. Now, here uh, where uh, is the palette? I'm gonna search and I'm gonna search radio buttons, and we have here radio group and radio button. Now. What is a radio button? A radio button is a button which allows you to turn it off or on. And uh, radio buttons are usually used in uh, radio groups because you want to uh, have uh, the user to select only one option, only one, one, one uh, button. So this is what uh, a radio button is. So let's uh, first create uh, the radio group. So I'm going to drag this. So I'm going to put inside the constraint layout. So I'm going to put it here. So we have our uh, radio group, but it's up here. Let's move it here. Let's constrain it. Let's move it a little bit. Now, let's add the radio buttons inside now our radio group. So I'm going to type here radio and I'm going to type I'm going to put it inside here the radio, the radio group. We have uh, we have the radio button here. 
let's put another radio button and let's put another one Right, so you have uh, beautifully here our uh, three radio buttons and let's change uh, their text. So, so go on the right hand side, we select uh, one radio button and uh, let's change uh, the attributes. Let's call this, let's give it an ID, let's call it, uh, let's give the ID. Yes. Button. click on refactor and let's change the text so the text now is radio button but you should create st string resources for the text so I'm gonna go inside the values strings and I'm gonna add some strings here so I'm gonna put string radio button text and it's gonna say yes I'm going to place Ctrl D to add uh, this, the, the line of code again and again. And let's change uh, this to radio button text uh, 1, 2, and 3. So these are their IDs. Now if you go here, instead of saying radio button, I'm going to say radio button text 1. And go to this one, you also Make sure to change the ID. So the ID is ready button too. Let's call it no button. Let's change the text. So we're gonna reference our so click on refactor to change the ID. So let's change the text. So I'm gonna type here string radio button text two. Just gonna say uh, yes. We should say uh, not yes, but no. So let's put here no. No and uh, maybe. Alright, so let's now also change the attributes of the third radio button. Let's change the text first here. So I'm going to type here string radio button text 3. And uh, let's also change the ID. So it's gonna be maybe button. I'm gonna press enter, click on refactor. Now let's also add the text view above, which is gonna uh, have the text of, of a question. But let's add the string first here. So we put string uh, text view question question and it's gonna say do you like programming all right now let's add a text view so I'm gonna take this text view I'm gonna put the above here I'm going to put it in the center. I'm going to constrain it. Um, let's change the text of the text view. So now have, it has the ID text view text. Uh, let's uh, call it text view text. Uh, question let's press enter to refactor and uh, let's change the text to something else to our string that we added in our string xml so type string so we have text view question let's also change the size of the text so size we have uh, 14 sp let's change it to let's say uh, 20 SP let's push it down a little bit all right so now we have our uh, UI ready the next thing that we need to do is to connect this UI with uh, the code
But first let's run this to see how it looks. Right, so our app opened, we have uh, our text view and we have the radio buttons. And as you can see, you can only select uh, one. And the next video, we're gonna add the code. So, see you in the next video. Right, so now it's time to connect uh, our UI components, our widgets with the code. But first, let's go inside activity main.xml. Let's go inside the code. And let's uh, give an ID to the, actually the radio group already has an ID. And as you can see, all the radio radio buttons are inside this radio group. So this is uh, good to have in mind. So let's go back in main activity. I'm gonna type here private, latent it, uh, radio group. It's gonna be a radio group, radio group. And we're gonna create also a radio button, private, latent var, radio button, of type radio button. All right, now, here we're gonna type radio group, radio group, not radio button. We're gonna be equals to find view by ID. And we're gonna refer the ID of the radio group, r.id that radio group. Now, what uh, we need to do next is to add an event listener. So to, to listen to the clicks on the on the radio on the radio buttons on, on the which are inside the radio group. And to do that, we need to use uh, red, the, we need to add attach the event listener on the radio group because even when you click on the on a button, it's also that button is going to be inside the radio group. So we type here radio group that's set, but now we're not uh, using uh, set on uh, click uh, listener, but set on sorry set on check listener so we use set on check listener not uh, set on click listener and this is uh, how you li listen to clicks on the radio group uh, and uh, on the radio buttons and which is we choose this one we we we, we let the name group and uh, i this should be should be id All right and we press enter now what we need to do next is to connect the radio. So we type here radio button, radio button equals find view by ID. But now I'm not gonna pass a specific ID here. So I'm not, I'm not gonna pass r.id that uh, yes button because this will always have the, the ID of the yes button. What uh, we need to do because now we are inside the set on check listener, we need to type here find view by id and when this uh, when you're gonna click on a button this uh, this uh, listener is gonna be called and is gonna uh, dynamically uh, uh, send you the id here the id of the button which was clicked so when we put here uh, find view by id we're gonna put that id which was uh, was for was which is for the button which was clicked so i'm gonna put id so now it's okay now as I said, this will change when you click on uh, the yes button, it will pass here the ID of the yes button. When you click on the no button, it will pass the ID of the no button. When you click on the maybe button, it will pass the ID of the maybe button. And we need to to individually respond to respond to clicks on the on the buttons. And to do that, we type here when so the when uh, statement expression, and we put here radio button that id and we put curly braces and now we type here r dot id dot s button gonna put uh, and curly braces gonna put also now r dot id dot no button so if the button click is the no button gonna do something 
and uh, if the button click is the maybe button we we'll put here r that id that maybe button we're gonna put this arrow curly braces and the quote that we're gonna be here so now what we're doing here is we're saying hey if the radio button which was click is the yes button then do something if the radio button that was click is the no button then do something and uh, now I'll introduce something called a toast because I want to show a message when we click the buttons to see how uh, the code works and the toast is a class with which you can display text on your app and to display text on your app you just type here toast so it have, I have a suggestion toast we put that and here you type make text and as you can see we have a few parameters here context resource id and we have uh, this one we're going to use this one context text and uh, now you may be wondering what is this context the context refers to where you are currently uh, with the code so where, where you are currently displaying the the where you are, are you currently displaying the text and currently you want to display the text inside the main activity because uh, uh, as you'll see you can have many activities and this is this is a way of saying to the toast hey display the text here by choosing this context we say display the text in the main activity and to do that we type here this so this context at main activity we have a suggestion then we put a comma and then we put the text that we want to have display so I'm gonna say yes button let's type button clicked so this is what uh, the context is and uh, also you need to show this text and to show the text to put here that show I, actually I, I, for, I forgot also need to provide the length here so how, how for how much time is gonna stay on the screen this text for a short time or a long time I'm gonna choose uh, a short time short and now we put that to show the 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 the, te the text on the uh, the app so i'm gonna put show now i'm gonna copy this line of code i'm gonna put it here i'm gonna put it here also and i'm gonna just change the the text here to no and here to maybe so now when we're going to click on uh, a specific on a button uh, this code is going to be called if you click on the yes button the code inside this is going to be called this toast is going to display a text inside the main activity so inside the screen that we have and uh, so let's run our app to see how it works click on terminate All right, so now if I click on the yes button, we get yes button click. So we get our message shown by the class talks, the toast that make text. If I click on the no button, we get no button click. If I click on the maybe button, we get maybe button click. So uh, this is beautiful and uh, I'm going to end the video now and see you in the next video. Now it's time to look at another widget that we can use in Android and that is a SIGBAR. And uh, a SIGBAR allows us to use our finger to drag left or right and to set the progress. And let's see how we can use a SIGBAR. So I'm going to go inside the activity.main, the, the XML. And uh, I'm going to go inside the code. I'm going to delete this text view because I don't need this text view go to design back and uh, here in the, in the palette I'm going to type seek and we have a seek bar and we we'll drag it here in the middle the seek bar alright let's constrain it horizontally and uh, vertically all 
All right. Um, let's give it an ID. Let's call it Sigbar. Press enter. Let's go to code and let's uh, let's set uh, why you have this idea here. Let's, let's delete this. Let's set the maximum progress to 10. So I'm going to type here max 10. So that is the maximum progress. Another thing that uh, I don't like is uh, the fact that it's very, very, very small, as you can see here. So let, let it, uh, make it, uh, let's increase the width. So I'm going to go to code and instead of, uh, here it says layout width, instead of wrap content, I'm going to put match parent. So we put match parent. So it will match the size of the parent. So it's going to be as big as the parent, the width. As you can see now, it's bigger. So if you go to main activity, or let's run it from here. If you run this, So our app opened and we have here our sig bar, so we can drag it here as you can see. Now let's add the text view here, which is going to show the current progress. So I'm going to go on activity.main, let's hide the emulator, let's uh, take this text view and let's put it here below. Let's constrain it. Let's move it up. Let's change the text size. So text size is 40 SP. Let's change it to 24 SP. All right, now actually let's change this uh, text, the text view to something else. So let's change the, the text to something else. So let's uh, go here, let's delete this, let's go down. So we have the text, text view. Let's change this text, but let's create a string resource for that. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go into values, strings, and I'm going to create here a string, which is going to be text view text, which is going to say uh, rate. So now I will uh, I will go down here and for the text now I'm gonna reference string text view text. All right. So now the, everything is okay. Now let's go inside main activity to add the code. So I'm gonna add here a private latent sigbar going to be of type sigbar and I'm going to create a text view text view progress let's say it's going to be a text view now we need to connect our uh, object with our uh, we just, I'm going to type here sigbar equals to find view by ID 
r.id that sick bar next i will go down and i will type text view text view progress equals to find view by id r.id text view i think this is the idea of the text view let's see yes that is the idea of the text view text view text view let's say progress so let's change now to progress now so we have this underline again and, um, i don't know why that happens but it it will disappear uh, after a, a few moments now what we need to do is to add an event listener to the sigbar so that we can uh, respond to when the the user drags the sigbar left or right we can respond to that uh, dragging so i'm gonna type here sigbar that and we choose not uh, set on click listener which is this one set on sig bar change listener so we select this one we, we type here uh, object and uh, we type here on sig bar change listener we put curly braces we press enter and now we're gonna implement uh, the functions so i'm gonna click on this implement members and we have uh, those three functions all right let's delete those to do's because we don't need those We still have this underline and I don't know why because everything is okay. Let's uh, rebuild our projects to see if it disappears. So it disappear. So if uh, you see something like that, just rebuild the project. While he's doing that, let's go inside the strings and let's change the string rate to rate and put zero here. Because this, I want the user to see when it first opens up, to see that uh, the rate is zero, all right? Now, all of those functions that we have here on progress change, on start tracking, on stop tracking touch, are, are going to be called at different uh, phases. And this one, progress change, is going to be called uh, always when we move the the sig bar so let's add a toast here to see this so you add a toast that make text let's say uh, one progress changed toss that length that sh short and let's add the show to show this text so I'm gonna copy this I'm gonna paste it here and I'm gonna paste it also here but now I'm gonna change this text here to on start tracking touch on start to see when they are called start tracking touch and here on stop tracking touch this is going to be called when we're going to stop drag again so i'm going to type here on stop tracking so Now, if you run this, click on terminate. Now, if you drag this, 
you see you have one star track in touch one progress change so this one is called when if, if, when you track it for the first time well, then one progress change and then uh, one stop tracking touch is called when you stop tracking so you do again one progress change and don't stop tracking touch so they are they are called uh, first is this one when you start dragging then is this one uh, while you while you're dragging and uh, this one when you stop dragging and let's uh, now update this text to to the rate uh, that the user uh, uh, chooses here so let's see how we can do that so let's hide the emulator and um, to change uh, that i'm gonna go inside the on progress change because here you can have access to the to the current progress so i'm gonna type here text view text text view progress that text equals sigbar that progress but we have a problem this is uh, it's, it's an integer and here we try to assign it to the text you test so we can't let's hover over and let's convert it to to string so we put that to string very easy now let's run this Right, so now we have we have our uh, app opened, and now if I drag this, you see that uh, the 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 text is changing. So if I drag this, we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But let's um, let's put the text uh, in front of here rate. So let's go here. So let's hide the emulator. And let's go here and let's type here. Uh, let's put quotation marks and let's put rate equals to plus here you can use a resource string but it's okay so let's run this now if you drag this as you can see now we have rate equals to one rate equals to rate equals to four rate equals to six seven eight and let's put a text view above to I have a question uh, let's say so um, let's put here uh, let's actually use the design so I'm gonna take a text view I'm gonna put it here and let's create a string resource And let's say rate let's type text view text rate and it's gonna say rate let's say what is the rating of this course let's say question mark let's go back inside activity.main let's click on text and let's change the text view from text to string string text view text rate and let's push it down a little bit so let's go up and let's push it down Now let's run this. So now we have what is the rating of this course, but the text is very small, so let's change the size of the text. And I'm going to go inside the code to do that because it's uh, more uh, rapid. So let's type here text size, let's say 20 SP. Let's run this code again.
So now we have what is the rating of this course and let's say that I go here and I say rate uh, equals to 8. So as you can see it's updated while I'm typing and I also have those toasts here called because we have those inside the dev, the functions. So um, uh, you can also uh, use this function on uh, stop tracking touch to add the f what text which is going to say final rate when uh, he stop when the user stops dragging. So it will change this text to final rate. Mm, you, can, you can do that. Let's actually do it to to see how. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to put it here. And uh, instead of sigbar, we call that one P0. It should be called, uh, and it, it, it's a nullable, so let's uh, put here those. So now if you run the code, but instead of rate, it's going to say final rate. So if you run this, Now if you do this and if you stop, get final rate is 7. If I move again, we have rate and I stop, we have final rate 4. If I move, I stop, final rate 10. So this uh, they are called uh, at, the, at the different uh, phases. So this is how you can use a SIG bar and uh, see you in the next video. Now it's time to look at another widget that we can use and that is a toggle button. But first let's create a new project. Let's choose an empty activity. Click on next. Let's call it toggle button. We press enter. Alright, so now our project is created and let's go inside activity.main.xml. Now, what is a toggle button? A toggle button is a button which allows you to check to check between two states, on or off. And uh, let's delete this. So I'm going to type here toggle. I'm going to drag this toggle button here. Let's uh, constrain it. Right. Let's also put a text view down here because uh, I will uh, I will make the text view disappear or appear depending on what uh, depending if we we have uh, checked uh, on or off. So let's put a text view here. Let's change the size of the text view. Let's type size here. 20SP and here we, create, we can create a string resource for this text so let's go inside the values let's open it tag string text view text which is gonna say simply uh, I don't know uh, text view it's gonna say text view Alright, let's go back here and now let's reference that uh, string.xml. So we have here string, text view text. So now if I go to design, we have our text view here, but let's push it up a little bit. Right. Now if I go inside the main activity, now let's connect those. So I'm going to type here private, latent it var toggle button, toggle, and private latent var text view, let's say text view hide of type text view. Now I'm going to reference those, so I'm going to type here toggle button equals find view by id r dot id dot toggle button. And text view 
text view hide equals to find view by id r dot id text view all right so we have those underlines so uh, again but they will disappear it's not a problem now we need to e listen to event listener to click on this toggle button and to do that to type here toggle button dot set and uh, on check listener so you choose this one toggle button checked on uh, set uh, on check listener and we choose this one But let's rebuild our project to don't have those underlines here. So go to build and uh, click to rebuild project. And then let's change this to is checked. All right, so let's go on back inside activity main.xml to make this invisible. So let's go to code and let's type here visibility invisible. So if we look now at design, it's gone. So let's go back to main activity. Now we're gonna check to see if it's checked. So if our toggle button is on, so it's checked, then we're gonna make our text view hide that visibility of equals to view that visible else we're gonna say it takes view hide that visibility that visibility equals view that invisible so now if you run this And we have an underline here. Let's rename this to an underline because we don't use that in our code. So we have on. If you press now on, you have text view. If you press again, it disappears. If you press again, it appears. So this is how you can use a toggle button. And this is very nice. So I'm going to end this video and see you in the next video. Now it's time to look at another widget that you can use in Android and that is a checkbox. And the checkbox allows only two states, checked or unchecked. So I'm going to go inside activity main.xml and uh, let's delete the hello, the hello world text view. So let's delete this. Let's go back to design and let's add our checkboxes here. So I'm going to type here in the palette, I'm going to search check and we drag this checkbox we put it here in the middle we constrain it horizontally and vertically we we'll add another uh, checkbox so we type here checkbox We're going to put it below this one. I'm going to constrain it. Let's push it up. So like that. Let's add another checkbox. Let's put it below this one. So let's constrain this checkbox also. Let's move it up. Now let's put a text view above because we're gonna ask a question. So I'm gonna type here, uh, actually we have the text view here. So I'm gonna put this text view here. I'm gonna constrain it. Let's push it down. 
let's increase the text size so I'm gonna go here I'm gonna increase the text size let's put 20 SP go back to design and I'm gonna put another text view which is gonna display what what uh, we check so what 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 uh, from our checkbox which one we check so I'm gonna put a checkbox below here but let's uh, actually put first a button so let's put a button let's constrain it not like that let's push this up and uh, let's now add another text view which is gonna display the checkbox that was checked so checkbox not text view text view actually not check, uh, checkbox sorry so let's take this text view let's put it below so this text view is gonna display what choice we've made so what uh, checkbox what checkbox which we checked so let's constrain it right let's move it up a little bit now let's move all of this up a little bit but let's uh, change the text size of the second text view to also 20 SP so let's type here text size 20 SP go to design now let's select all of those and let's move them up so if now we move this up all of them are gonna be moved up so move them up all right so now it's okay now let's create some strings here so I'm gonna type here uh, first the string for the, uh, for the text views I'm gonna type here string text view question let's type here what programming language you like let's add another text view another uh, string and so I'm gonna type string text view option text view option and this uh, actually this is gonna be empty you don't need the uh, we don't need this now let's add the the strings for the checkbox because we're gonna have some text on the right of the checkbox I'm gonna type string and I'm gonna type here checkbox and it's gonna have uh, the text uh, Kotlin I'm gonna press Ctrl D and uh, I'm gonna change this to Java and Python so checkbox uh, Kotlin checkbox Java and uh, checkbox Python I'm gonna put here now we'll go inside activity.main.xml and, and we're gonna add the text for uh, the checkbox and we can do it from the design from here so let's do from for one of them from here so let's take the first checkbox and we we'll go down and we have the text checkbox I'm gonna delete that I'm gonna type here string Kotlin so now the text was changed and uh, we can do the same thing for the next ones but I'm gonna go, uh, do this from code so I'm gonna go inside the code 
I'm gonna go inside the code. I have the checkboxes here, but uh, I do, I can't ident identify them because. Uh, I, so let's let's actually do it from design. So I'm gonna do it from design. Um, let's go down again. I'm gonna put here string. Checkbox Java. Then next checkbox. We select that and do type here string checkbox python now let's select this text view we're gonna put the question let's go up so here I'm gonna type string text view question so we have what programming language do you like uh, Kotlin, Java, Python, and we have the button. Let's, let's move the button a little bit down. Now let's add some IDs to our checkbox. I'm gonna uh, uh, click on the first checkbox. It has the ID checkbox, and let's call it checkbox Kotlin. Uh, uh, Click on refactor. We select the second checkbox. We call it checkbox Java. We press enter. We select the third checkbox and I'm gonna call this checkbox Python. And also gonna give an ID for uh, this uh, click on refactor to have uh, the ID added there. So I'm gonna click on this text view and this text is gonna display the choice. So I'm gonna call this text view choice. Press enter and refactor. Now, if you go inside the main activity and if you run this, So we have our uh, checkboxes and uh, we have the button and the text, the qu question here, so everything looks fine. So we're going to continue the, our discussion in the next video. Now it's time to create the objects and to connect them with the widgets that we created. So let's first create the checkboxes. So I'm going to type here private, later need var, check. box let's say Kotlin it's gonna be of type checkbox again private later need var check checkbox let's call it uh, Java let's type again private later need var check box python also checkbox and we also need to uh, reference our text view because here we're gonna show the state of our checkboxes so what checkboxes are checked or are unchecked and let's say let's see what i did this text view sorry <coughs> so let's see what uh, uh, so let's So let's see what I did this text view has. So I'm gonna go inside activity main.xml. Let's hide the emulator. Let's click on text view. And it has the ID text view choice. So I'm gonna type here private later need var text view choice. Then be of type text view. And let's go back inside the activity menu because let's change the text of the button to something else. So let's go inside the strings to create a string here. String 
button is going to have the ID text and it's going to be called show. It's going to have the text show. Now go back here and uh, we have the ID button. Let's call it uh, show button for the ID. Press enter. Click on refactor. Let's click on text view and uh, let's delete that text to have uh, when we, we, we opened up for the first time to don't, to don't have this uh, text view as the text. So let's delete this. All right, so let's go back here. Now let's connect now our objects with the, with the widget. So I'm gonna type here first checkbox, Kathleen equals find view by ID R dot ID dot checkbox Kathleen checkbox Java equals find view by ID R dot ID dot checkbox Java checkbox Python equals find view by ID R dot ID checkbox Python and let's also connect the text view. So I'm going to type text view equals find view by id r dot id text view choice. Now let's attach one click listener to our button, but we didn't create the button. So let's create also the button here. Private latent var show button of type button. Let's see what ID the button has. Let's import that. So let's see what ID this button has. And let's change the text to show. And let's see what ID has. So it has the ID show button. So I'm gonna type here uh, show button find view by id r dot id dot show button now let's attach uh, an event listener to our show button so let's type here show button dot set on click listener so we're gonna listen to clicks on the show button i'm gonna press enter let's rebuild again the project because we have that underline now it disappeared Right now everything is fine. Next, what we need to do is to create a string builder because I'm gonna concatenate some strings. So I'm gonna append some string. And to do that, I'm gonna type here val sb for string builder equals string builder and here I'm gonna type sb dot append. So I'm gonna append some text, append, and here I'm gonna type checkbox I'm gonna choose uh, the first one Kathleen dot text so I'm gonna get the text the name of the checkbox dot to string let's put a plus status is and um, let's push it to the next line and let's type here checkbox so let's put a plus there, a plus here. So let's go here. And the type checkbox, Kathleen dot is checked. So this is gonna return if the uh, the checkbox is checked or is not checked. So what we're doing here, we're appending this uh, entire string and we're gonna append it after uh, we, we, um, we we append the entire string. We're gonna also we have to append the strings for all the uh, for all the checkboxes. So we're gonna we're gonna add here a backslash n to to move to the next line and to skip uh, the the line. So I'm gonna put here backslash n. Now I'm gonna type again string builder dot append checkbox java that takes that to string 
plus status is so put the plus here we go here and to type checkbox and checkbox uh, java is gonna give us the status is checked or is not checked and what we're doing here with the string builder we, is that we are appending and we first appending this text and we add a new line and then on the next line we add this text so this is why uh, we are using this uh, string builder because we can append uh, in, in this uh, in this way text and uh, let's uh, push let's also put here a backslash 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 n to have a new line so i'm gonna put backslash n and let's type again sb that append I'm gonna type here checkbox python i think that is that text that to string plus status is I'm gonna put plus here again checkbox python that is checked and also plus and a backslash and to to add the new line to to add a new line so now we need to set this text to our text view choice so to do that we're gonna go down here we type text view choice dot text and we're gonna type here sb dot to string and that is gonna append the entire text to to our uh, to our text view choice so now if you run this let's put a colon here colon here Let's run it again because I added the columns and I want to have that. All right, now if I uh, go here and I check uh, Kotlin and I click on the show button, we get Kotlin status is true. So this uh, is, is executed the code that is here. If I uh, check Java and I click on show, we get uh, Kotlin status is true, Java status is true. If I check Python, we get Kotlin status is true, Java status is true, Python status is true. And if I uncheck all and I click on show, we get that all have the state false. Or if you click on Java, you have Java true. So this is what you can do with uh, checkboxes. Checkboxes can have a state which can be checked or unchecked. And uh, this will be very uh, useful uh, when uh, building apps. So. I'm gonna end the video now and see you in the next video. Now it's time to see what is an activity. Therefore, let's create a new project. Let's select empty activity. And let's call it activity. And let's click on finish. All right, now our project is created. Now, what is an activity? An activity, as you saw in the previous videos, is simply just a, a window, a screen, with which the user can interact. And uh, the activity has two parts, the front end part, so the what the user sees, the, where you have all the widgets and, uh, and so on, and the back end part. And this is where it's all the logic, which, uh, uh, which, uh, which we the developers uh, can see and those two interact with each other and this, this creates uh, creates the the actual app the actual app is the interaction of the uh, back end of the code with the with the front end with the, the ui components now what as you can see here we are extending from app compact activity and why we're doing that we're doing that because uh, 
actually this activity up compact activity is doing all the hard off of creating the activity because the up compact activity has a lot of fu many functions which uh, it's which are responsible for drawing the screen for uh, uh, for uh, doing the logic for uh, to make the activity to work and all of those all of that uh, logic is inside the upconfact activity and we just inherit from that activity and we change it a little bit in our case we override as you can see here the one create function and we when you override the create function we set the content to our with the layout with our own layout that is defined here so we set the layout that layout activity that main and uh, if you hold control and press uh, click on this as you can see this is a, a compact activity but if you if you go here and if you press control o as you can see all of those functions are inside the, the activity the up compact activity and all of those uh, functions are doing the the hard work of creating an activity we just inherit from the activity and uh, we provide an implementation from uh, for uh, for uh, some particular uh, functions like in our case we override the one create so when the one create uh, uh, function is called we pass our own logic which is to to draw this on the screen the activity main.xml that we created. Next, we have this thing called save instance state and we have a bundle. And what this bundle is doing is holding all the properties, all the functions of this activity, of the main activity. And it's doing that because activities in special circumstances can restore themselves to the previous stage. So this is why we have this uh, here, disabling instance and bundle. So this is what uh, an activity is. It's just a screen and uh, has two parts, the front end, the back end. Those two interact and this creates the, the, the app. And uh, we are inheriting from uh, an activity because we, we don't need to create an activity from uh, zero. So to create all the functions that will be take, uh, I don't know, maybe months to do all of that. We just inherit all of that and we provide some new, uh, some, some new functionality to the already functionality that uh, the activity that the Android provides uh, has. So this is what an activity is and uh, see you in the next video. Now it's time to start a discussion about activity lifecycle. So what is activity lifecycle? Activity lifecycle is the phases, the steps through which our app is going when you launch your app. And uh, those steps or phases are represented by some functions which are called by the system. So those functions are called by the system. We don't call those functions. Actually, as you'll see, we can override those functions in our own activity. Now. When you launch your app for the first time, the one create function is called. And in the one create function, we set up our UI components. We connect the objects with the UI components with the find view by ID and so on. Next, the one start function is called. And after the one start function is called, the one resume function is called. And at that point, the activity is running. So at this point, we have the activity, the, if you want the app uh, running. So you, you have the activity running. but now, if you want, you leave the app, so if you close the app, the on pause is called, the on stop is called, and the on destroy is called, and the activity is shut down and the app is closed. Now, here, depending on how you close the app, uh, you'll uh, you'll determine if the on destroy is called or not, because if you leave uh, the app only uh, by the back button, so we don't remove it from the app list. Uh, is uh, the, only the one stop is going to be called and the activity is not going to be destroyed and uh, at this point uh, if you open the app again so you you didn't uh, remove the app from the app list it will go back on the on start so this is uh, the activity life cycle now let's open android studio now let's override the function that i talked about so let's override first the one start Then the one resume. The one pause. One stop. And the on destroy. 
So now we have already those functions inside our uh, main activity and uh, let's add the toes to see that actually our app is going through all of those phases. So let's put here toes that make text. I'm gonna specify the context, this that main activity and the text, let's say on start called toast that length short and that show and let's copy that let's put it here here and here. Now let's change the text. Let's put here on resume. On pause. On stop. And on destroy. Now let's run our app. Also, we have uh, we have an error here. We don't have the parentheses here, so we have an error there. Let's run this again. Click on terminate. So we have on start called, on resume called, and uh, now its activity is running. Let's also add a toast inside the on create to see that the on create is also called. So let's rerun this. So on create is called, on start is called, on resume is called, and now our activity is running. Now, as I showed you in the uh, the picture, now if I leave the app only by this, uh, let's say by this button, and I don't uh, remove the app from the app list, we get on pause called, on stop called, but the on destroy is not called. And now if I reopen that app here, now the on start is called and on resume is called again. And if I leave it by this back button, get on pause called, on stop called, and on destroy is called. So it, now it completely destroyed our uh, our app. If I open this, now on create is called again, on start is called, on resume is called, and so on. So this is the activity life cycle. So these are the life cycles to which our activity is going. And I might be wondering, and um, what about uh, this? What 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 is this useful? This is useful because you can add code at different phases. Let's say that first you want you want you want for so whatever reason to open a file, and you can do that in the one start uh, fun the one start function. So you, you can do that before the one resume or the in the one. Uh, one pause is called and we can open the file or can open a database and um, let's say that uh, you want to 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 save uh, I don't know maybe some value some properties or maybe you want to close a database you, you can do that be, in, before this before destroying the app you can save all of that data and then you can let the the app to be destroyed so you, so you, you override the function you save uh, whatever you want to save and then you let the the one destroy function to to destroy your uh, your activity so you save the state so this is the power of using uh, those functions because you can uh, call you can use them and can add code in them at uh, specific uh, uh, in specific scenarios so now i'm going to end the video and see you in the next video 
Now it's time to create more than one activity because so far in our videos you only worked with one activity with one screen but in a real app you probably or definitely you will have more than one screen and uh, I'm gonna also show you how to open a new activity so how to navigate from one, one activity to another activity and first I'm gonna go to resources to create some uh, strings so I'm gonna go here I'm gonna create here I'm gonna type string let's uh, call activity underscore one let's type here activity activity one let's create another string activity two and it's going to have the text activity two Let's create a text because we're going to create a button to we're going to use a button to navigate to the activity. So I'm going to type here button go to second activity and it's going to say go to next or go to now let's go inside activity main.xml let's go to code and uh, I'm gonna keep this text view but I'm gonna change uh, the text to activity so I'm gonna put here string activity one and uh, I'm gonna make the text size bigger so I'm gonna put here 20 SP I'm gonna go to design and I'm gonna put a button uh, here so we say activity one let's say it should be activity one and activity two all right so i'm gonna put a button i'm gonna drag it here let's constrain it let's push it up a little bit Let's add uh, an ID and I'm, go, I'm gonna go inside the code. ID button go to activity. We're gonna change the text to string button go to second activity. Now if I go to design, we have go to. And let's make uh, the letters to not be uppercase so let's type here all caps and let's set false so now if i look here i have go to and we have activity one now how to navigate to the next activity first we need to create the activity so we click on this package called the uh, com that example that activities so we right click on it we go to new and you go down here where it says activity and here we have a few options and we select this one empty activity so new activity and empty activity we need to give a name to this activity it's called main activity 2 let's call it uh, second activity let's delete the 2 and let's click on finish and now we're going to create uh, another uh, activity and now change has been meant to let's uh, keep memory changes okay so now we have our second activity opened here as you can see we have it here and it's opened now let's go back inside main activity let's create uh, our button private go private latent it go to button so it's gonna be of type button I'm gonna type here go to button equals find view by ID r dot ID dot go to activity I'm gonna set on click listener so go to let's put it here go to button dot set on click listener 
and you press enter now let's well, actually now let's go inside the so I did this inside the main activity so let's go inside the second activity and let's go inside the second activity that XML so uh, we have activity this is the second or we can uh, go here we have layouts and we have activity second activity main so let's go inside activity second and let's put a text view here in the middle so we put a text view we constrain it and um, we need to give let's create another string here actually we have a, a string here activity two. so we go in uh, activity second and uh, let's change the text of that text view so from text view to activity two so string activity two let's increase the text size to 20 sp now if i go to design so now you we are in the uh, layout of the second activity so we're setting the the layout of the setting sec second activity now here now let's go back inside the main activity and let's uh, see how we can go to the next activity to go to the next activity we need to use a class called intent so i'm gonna type here val intent i'm gonna put equals intent and the intent takes Two, two things first is the context on which you are currently in the activity in which you are currently in and the activity uh, that you want to go so if we type here this I run this at main activity and now the activity where I want to go so second activity and we use uh, this uh, syntax colon colon java class.java so this is uh, this is uh, how you, you th th basically what you're saying here hey go from the main activity where I'm currently in to the second activity now we need to call a, call a function now which is gonna actually uh, move us to the next activity and then that function is called start activity so we type here start activity and as you can see as, as, as you can see it takes as input an intent so I'm gonna put intent the intent that to create above and now when I run uh, this right so we have our activity activity one now if i click on uh, go to now it's opening the second activity so now we are in a different screen on the second activity that we created as you can see here say activity two if i press on the back button it will take me back in the activity one and uh, let me show you another way to start the activity using uh, the the scope function also so let's delete this let's delete this and what we can do, I can put here also start activity it. So we are referencing the context object, which is the intent. So now if you run this, If I click on go to, we go to the second activity and if, if I click on this back button, it will take me back in the first activity. So this is how we can uh, create other activities and this is how we can navigate through activities. So I'm going to end the video now and see you in the next video. Now it's time to see how we can send data from one activity to another activity. And uh, we're going to use an intent because besides uh, starting an activity with an intent, you can also add data which can be sent to, to, an, to another activity with the intent and to do the data I'm gonna go down here I'm gonna type intent I'm gonna put that and we're gonna use a, this function called put extra and this function put extra takes two arguments the first is the key so the key of uh, of the of the value that we're going to pass and then and the, then we have the value so the data that you want to have sent it and the now you may be wondering why uh, you have this key like uh, in the uh, hash maps or the maps this is because you're going to use the key in the second activity to get the data 
this is why. So in this recommended to create this keys as constant. So you don't have, uh, if you don't type uh, correctly the key, you'll, you'll not uh, get the data. So I'm gonna create a new Kotlin file. So uh, new, where is Kotlin file? Kotlin class file, select file, and I'm gonna call it constants. Or uh, let's call it uh, Utils for Utils. Press enter. And here I'm going to type class constants. And I'm going to create a companion object so that I can uh, call this without creating an instance. And I'm going to type here constant val. And constant val is going to create a constant, which you cannot change the value. So, and uh, usually the name of the constants, uh, the name of the constants are uh, um, uppercase. So I'm going to put here. Uh, uh, intent key intent message underscore key and uh, this is the way of uh, declaring uh, a constant with uppercase letters and if you have if it has multiple words you put underscore and I put equals you're gonna type here message in this way you can call this in, uh, anywhere in our code and you don't need to worry about uh, typing uh, this correctly because it can happen to have uh, to type that wrongly. So I'm going to hit it, put here, put extra. I'm going to type here uh, uh, constants. As you can see, you have this con that example the activity. So that one, that, and we have our uh, our constant value, intent message key. We put a comma and a message, and the message is going to be he hello hello from second from first activity and let's uh, add uh, another uh, intent to put something else and let's create another constant here so let's put constant val intent message to underscore key and this is going to have uh, the key message too. I'm going to go back inside the main activity. We need to close this. And uh, I'm going to go down here. We type intent. That put extra. If again, constants. That constant message key too. And we're going to say. Uh, uh, how was your day? And we're going to put also another type of value, not only strings, to put some uh, numbers. So let's create another constant, constant val intent, um, let's say uh, data, this is not the best name, but not da data number equals to let's say number I'm gonna go here I'm gonna type again intent that put extra again constants that and we use this one and I'm gonna pass a number here let's say 3.14 is the value now, what we need to do next is just to start the activity and to pass the intent. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it here. And now the, 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 this data is going to be sent to the next activity. And then the next activity, we need to capture the data. So go on the second activity. And inside the onCreate function, we type val. We're going to type, we're going to call this uh, data equals I'm going to put get intent, so we'll get the intent which which comes when you open the, the second activity. Get. Actually, you can use intent dot extras. So I'm going to get the extras that are passed here. So as you can see, we have put extra. And here we're going to get the extras. So uh, I'm going to go down here. And first, you need to check if the data is not uh, empty. So I'm going to type here if data that is empty and if it's not empty 
but we have a problem here actually we need to let's use uh, the Elvis operator so let's put data Elvis operator dot let and let's press enter and here now we're gonna get uh, the data so I'm gonna type here val message gonna be equal to uh, data dot get string and the key and here we're gonna pass the key from constants dot intent message key I'm gonna press control D to have this again message to message to and we're gonna have the uh, other uh, other key here so intent message to key I'm gonna press control D and now I'm gonna get uh, the number here so you type here number so what we're doing with this data uh, this service operator is saying hey if the data is not null then execute this code this is what we're doing here and as you can see it's saying that you can replace data with uh, it so we can put here instead of data it but I'm gonna put data Im that uh, immediately so here we need to change the constant to number data number now I'm gonna use this text view for the second activity to 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 display the data that we get from the first activity and let's uh, give it an ID let's say uh, text view to it's not care it's not really a really good name let's call it text view uh, uh, data for the ID and here we're gonna create a text view private later need var text view view data intent of type text text view and uh, I'm gonna type here text view equals find view by id r dot id text view data and here we're gonna pass the message and uh, the message to and the number so I'm gonna type here uh, uh, text view data intent is gonna be equal to and we're gonna type here message and uh, if you hover over it says found take uh, required text view or uh, so we need to put text view dot text sorry message I'm gonna put a plus I'm gonna put a backslash into uh, to add a new line and uh, I'm gonna put here uh, plus message plus mess mess I can use let's type message to I'm gonna put again uh, a new line plus new line backslash n and plus and now we're gonna get the no number so we're gonna type here number and we have this gray we have so it's, it's saying to use string resources but here uh, we're getting the data from there so we can't use string resources now here we have again this underline this uh, error uh, always appears I don't know why because it, the code is okay it's fine now it disappeared now if you run this look what happens Alright, so our app opened. Let's go to the next activity, and we get uh, the message "Hello from first activity." 
how was your day and here we get uh, uh, get null but I don't know why I get null there so let me see I didn't pass uh, actually this is because here we're getting a string what we should get instead is an int so get int here So now if you run this again So now we're getting an integer not a string that, that was the mistake Now if I press go to Get hello from uh, activity how was your day and have that but I don't know why we have zero because I passed a different number there Alright, so now I know where is the problem. The problem is that in main activity, we are using the intent to put extra. We are passing a key here and the value that we pass here is a double. And here in the second activity, uh, first I use the get string. I was wrong. Then I use the get in. I was wrong because what actually I should use here is get double because we passed a double in our main activity. So I need to get double here. So if I put here instead of int get double. Now if you run this, everything will work fine. Click on terminate. Go to and you have uh, hello from first activity. How was your day? And then we have 3.14, yeah, the number that we passed here. This this why you got that uh, uh, we didn't got the no the number here because I was trying to get an int first was a string then an integer. Actually, you should uh, what I should uh, do uh, did is to get the double because here in the main activity we're, we're passing uh, a double values for uh, a double type for our uh, value. So this is uh, our discussion about how we can pass data from one activity to another. In the next video, we're going to see how we can pass data from uh, the second activity to the first activity. So to so send data back. So see you in the next video. Now it's time to see how we can send data back from the second activity to the main activity. But first, I'm going to go inside activity second.xml to add the button here. I'm going to go to design. I'm going to drag a button here below of our activity text. I'm going to constrain it horizontally and vertically. I'm going to push it up a little bit. Let's change the text. So I'm going to go here. I created a string for the text. So we go here, we delete this, and the type string, button go back. Now if I go to design, we see that we have go back, but let's uh, set uh, all caps to false. So let's go to code, and then let's type here, all caps to false. So now if you go to design, we, get, we have the uh, letters in lower, lower case. Now, let's see what idea this button has. And let's call it uh, button go back. Let's press enter. Click on refactor. Let's go to second activity. And uh, let's uh, create a button here private, latent it, var go back button of type button now we need to connect that button with the widget button so i'm going to type here uh, go go back button equals find view by id r dot id dot button go back to activity I think that is no it's not that button go back is so button go let's delete this r dot id this one button go back 
And again, we have this underlined, but it's not a problem that will disappear. I'm going to set on click listener to button go back. So I'm going to type here go back button dot set on click listener. Press enter. Now what I'll do, I'll create a constant. So I'm going to go inside the utils. I'm going to create another constant. And this, this actually I have the, if you don't have this, just type here constant val request or result code equals and you define here a number then you go back inside the, inside the second activity and here you're gonna type uh, val intent equals to get intent so we're gonna get the intent uh, that uh, was uh, uh, that enter in our activity so with the intent which enter in our activity now we're getting that intent all right so here we type set result and we have the result code and the intent. So we're gonna pass here and I'm gonna type here uh, constants dot result code and the intent. And then I'm, I'm gonna type finish to close this activity, all right? Now I'm gonna go back inside the main activity because now here we need to uh, create the code which is gonna respond to the when we, when we are coming back from the second activity to main activity, we need to capture that data somehow, and we also need to start when to start the activity to, and to make sure that uh, that activity the, the intent is gonna come back from the same code activity with some result, and for that we need to use a different function. But first, let's uh, add an ID to our uh, text view. Actually, we have an ID because we're going to display the data which is coming from the second activity. So I'm going to go inside the main activity. I'm going to type private latent var takes view data, let's call it. It's going to be of type takes view. Now here we're going to type takes view data equals find view by id r dot id dot takes view right and this the view is going to display the data which is coming back from the second activity now i'm going to go up here and i will type here val get result because we're going to get uh, the result back from the second activity i'm going to put equals and i'm going to type here register activity for result and here i'm going to type start activity for result we put parentheses here and we put a lambda here. So I'm going to put curly braces and press enter. Now here I'm going to type if it dot result code equals equals to constants dot result code. Then that means that we get uh, we, we got back the data which uh, uh, was sent by the intent that was previously entering the same code activity, and now we s that the intent was is sending back uh, the uh, the data. And by checking if the result code is equal to constant as result code, we're checking to see if the data which is coming back is the data that is from this intent. This is why you check we're checking there, and. Um, if that is true, I'm going to type, I'm going to put curly braces. Press enter. And here I'm going to type um, val, let's say message equals to it that get. it dot data dot get string extra constants and let's see what we gave here actually we didn't put here uh, data so let's type here intent dot put extra let's type here uh, have a constant for that let's see message to 
constants so this is the key that message message to key and it's gonna say hello from the second activity activity now let's go back inside the main activity constants that message to key so we're gonna get that data so now we're getting the data and uh, this is uh, basically saying that it can be null so this is why we have this underline here and um, we can solve that by uh, typing uh, uh, it actually we know that it's not gonna be null so I'm gonna put here two exclamation marks to say that it's gonna be fine it's not gonna be null then I'm gonna type text view result that text equals message now we need to start our intent and we're gonna start our intent our intent using this get result that we that we define here because we're gonna start the intent our intent is gonna register for our result and it's gonna also uh, check to see if the when it, when it's coming back it's gonna check to see if the result uh, code is equal to the result code that we define in the second in the second activity and if that is uh, true you will get the data and gonna display the data in text view result so I'm gonna here we need to type get result dot launch and here now you are we're passing the the intent so I'm gonna pass here intent so this is how we'll, uh, we do it. So now if I run this, all right, so our app opened, let's click to go to. And we're now in the second activity. Now let's uh, click on go back and to get the text hello from the second activity so everything uh, works fine so our code is working fine here so again what we are doing here is we are uh, first uh, creating a, a variable get result and we are storing in the the variable get result this uh, thing that is going to register the activity for results so it's not going to simply start the activity it's going to start the activity and it's going to register for a result that is going to come back and uh, if the re result code that is coming back from that uh, intent is the same uh, code that uh, was defined on the intent which passed which passed the data uh, this this code then in that case it will uh, it will uh, assign it will get the, it will get a string extra so it will get the uh, information and it will assign to our text view text and we're going to see hello from the second activity so everything works uh, fine so all right so this is our discussion about how we can uh, send data back from the second activity so see you in the next video and if you find uh, this confusing just um, just uh, uh, you can watch the video again or uh, you can uh, look at the code and you can think about how all of this works and why this works but it's not that hard the, what we're doing is basically we register the activity for results so we're not just starting an activity we starting the activity and we're expecting a result and then we're gonna each, we check to see if the result code is equal to the code which was passed from the second activity when the data was passed after that we get data we get data using the key and we display the data in our text view and here we use the get result to start the activity but we're gonna start the activity by registering the activity for results so it's not gonna be uh, uh, simply start activity and the intent we have get result that launch so it's gonna launch the activity with this register for activity result which is gonna listen for uh, uh, the data which is coming back so this is our discussion about uh, uh, how to send back uh, data back from a second activity and see you in the next video now it's time to start a discussion about recycle view therefore let's create a new project 
I'm going to call it recycle view. And let's click on finish. Now, what is a recycle view? A recycle view is just a particular view which, with which you can display a list of items on which you can scroll. So in other words, you can display a list of scrollable items. So let's go inside activity that uh, underscore that made XML to other recycle view. So I'm gonna, let's delete this hello world text and let's type here recycle view and I'm gonna drag this recycle view here. I'm gonna put it here. Let's constrain it. All right. Now let's go back back to main activity and let's uh, run our app to see what uh, what we have. All right, so our app uh, opened and we have nothing here. And this is uh, because the recycle view that we have here that we added here it's just uh, an empty template. In order for the recycle view to work, to display individual items, scrollable items, you need to uh, create what is called an adapter. And you can think of the adapter as the bridge between the template and the data. And the, the adapter is gonna fetch all the data inside the recycle view and it's gonna display that data inside the recycle view. But uh, before we do that, before creating the adapter, we need to create uh, a layout which is gonna display the which is gonna represent the each individual item inside the recycle view. So I'm, I'm gonna go inside the resources, layouts. I'm gonna right click on the layout, go to new, and select layout resource file. I'm gonna call this uh, item. Let's call it recycler view. item. Let's click on OK. Let's go to code. And here I'm going to delete this constraint layout and I'm going to put a relative layout. Now what is a relative layout? Relative, relative layout is also a layout but it, it you can uh, manipulate the the child uh, widgets which are going to be inside the relative lay layout in a particular way, in a different way. So this is why you're using here a relative layout. So we type relative layout, as you can see. And uh, with this you can manipulate the data or the views which are inside the relative layout uh, which, with more flexibility than with a constraint layout. So here I can put orientation and I'm going to put vertical. I'm going to go down here and what I need, what I will add now is a card view. So I'm going to type here card view. It's going to match parent. It's going to wrap content. And, uh, and you're going to open here because you're going to put inside. And here inside we're going to put a linear layout. And a linear layout allows us to have our items inside the linear layout orientated vertically. So I'm going to type here linear layout. Let's open in the tag inner layout, we choose this one, we choose match parent, wrap content, we opening tag, and here I'm gonna put a text view. Wrap content, wrap content. Down I'm gonna put another text view. Wrap content, wrap content. Let's give an ID to the text view. Let's say text view item and here ID plus 
takes view number because here we're going to display a number. Now if I go back in activity main.xml and if I go inside the code, now if I type here tools list item and I choose this one uh, recycle view that uh, view item now we can see the how how our recycle view is gonna look so for whatever reason I can't but it should work let's go to design back so it's not showing for whatever reason but uh, it's okay Let's go back inside recycle view that item. Let's go to design. And let's also add some padding to our uh, to our uh, parent layout. So I'm gonna put here padding, let's put 16 dp. Let's go to design, let's go to code, and let's some put, let's put some text here. Let's say uh, text. item one and here text uh, a number let's say let's put here also orientation vertical let's go to design so this is how now it looks we have item one and five but let's uh, let's uh, make the text a little bigger so it takes size 20 SP and here also take size 20 SP so I'm gonna go back to design so now we have our uh, but I, I still wondering why uh, it didn't show the result view here item so let's copy this Let's change this to a rel relative layout to see maybe it will uh, work. So let's change it to a relative layout. Orientation vertical. Now if I go to design, now I can see the, the individual uh, item. It should, it should show the individual items, but you only see the individual item. And as you can see, this is a card view. As you can see, and you have this has this border here. All right, so it's okay. Let's go back to code. Let's go back to main activity. And I'm gonna end the video now. And the next video, I'm gonna create the adapter and gonna fetch our recycle view with data. I'm gonna display the data in the recycle view. So see you in the next video. Now it's time to create an adapter to fetch data inside our recycle view. But first, let's create a few packages because. It's good to have uh, uh, the code uh, organized. So if you have classes which are uh, somehow related, it's good to have them in the same package. So I'm gonna create first a package called utils and here I'm gonna put our utilities like uh, constants, like some constants. So I'm gonna type here utils. I'm gonna create another package called uh, model and here I'm gonna put our model class and another package called uh, adapter and here we're gonna put our adapters so I'm gonna type adapter now I'm gonna go inside the model class and here we're gonna create a Kotlin class file I'm gonna call it uh, example item it's gonna be a file and here I'm gonna type class example item and it's gonna have two properties val title of type string and val description also of type string no. and it's gonna be a data class so we're gonna put data here so this class that we have here description so this class that we have here is gonna represent the individual item the XML item that we created here this is what this class is uh, representing Next, we're gonna create an adapter. So uh, on the adapter package, you go to new and uh, we also create a new file. I'm gonna call this file adapter. And here I'm gonna type 
class example adapter parenthesis to for the constructor in and we are going to inherit from the from the class called recycle view that adapter and here between the angle brackets we need to pass an inner class which, which is going to be the view holder so uh, i'm going to put parenthesis here and i'm going to type here example adapter that and the inner class that we're going to create immediately so it's going to be called uh, example view holder so i'm going to put curly braces and I'm going to go here and I'll type inner class example view holder. So now we have our uh, our example view holder here, but we have the, this underline. Let's put parentheses and we need to extend from our recycler view that view holder and here we need to pass an item view we're going to see immediately why so we put view view and we're going to put that view let's import that import and we're going to pass the view here to the parent class now if you hover over here we need to implement now some functions because what we are doing now is we are taking all the functionality that a recycle view, which the Android developers created, all the functions and all the properties and all the that uh, logic which is gonna display, which is gonna create a, a recycle view, and we are inheriting from it, and we provide some new functionality which is particular to our own uh, uh, list, to our own uh, recycle view, and because of that we need to implement the functions here so i'm going to implement those three functions so i'm going to click on ok now you see the power of inheritance in action so we delete those we delete this and the inner class usually we put at the end of those uh, those uh, functions so i'm going to go down here and i'm going to put it here all right now we need to create uh, to pass for the constructor to pass a context because we're going to use this context so we're going to be of type context and a list of uh, let's import that a list of elements it's going to be a mut mutable list and this is going to be the list with the data that is going to be displayed in our uh, recycle view so it's going to be a mut mutable list of example item all right so now everything looks fine let's push this down because it looks better or like this let's actually do it like this all right and uh, now i'm gonna end the video in the next video we're gonna continue our discussion about recycle view adapter and i'm gonna see how you could, how we'll make our recycle view our example adapter to display the data in our recycle view so see you in the next video now it's time to continue our discussion and first we're gonna look at the on create view holder function and this function is responsible for inflating our layout and what do i mean by inflating is that android system will take this xml file and will turn this xml file into something that we can see so it will turn this xml file in this that we can see and uh, to do that i'm gonna type here val view i'm gonna put equals i'm gonna type layout inflator so this is the class that we're gonna use to inflate our layout I'm going to type from and he, here we need to pass the context. I'm going to pass here parent dot get context. And this basically it will give the uh, context of the parent and then the context is going to be the main activity. So where it's going to be inflated in the main activities. Next, I'm going to put dot inflate and we need to pass the the layout that is going to be in play that is going to be inflated. So I'm going to put R dot layout but we need to import the R, I think. And we choose this, this one, recycle view item. Then we need to pass some, some again, parent here. 
and false for uh, attached to root. And you don't need to understand uh, all of this, how it works, because most of the time you just, you, you'll just type this again and again. Now, I'm gonna go down here, and now we need to return an example view holder which, with the inflated view that we inflated above. So I'm gonna type here return, example view holder, and I'm gonna pass to the constructor view. So this example view holder is this that we created below here. And it, it for the parameter view, we passed our uh, inflated view that uh, we inflated here, which is the re recycle view item that we created here. So this, this XML file, we inflated that XML file, and then we passed that XML file to the example view holder, which holds the, which basically holds uh, the recycle view uh, items uh, widgets and we need to go inside the example view holder to connect our objects with the widgets i'm going to type put i'm going to put here curly braces i'm going to type here val i'm going to um, type here uh, title of type text view going to be equals and now i'm going to use our view that going to that, that was inflated and it was passed here to the constructor to go inside the, the, that view and to connect with the widgets. So the view that is passed here, which was inflated here. Now we're gonna use that view which is passed here to, to, to go to get our widget. So type view, find view by ID. I'm gonna type r.id.title. And if you remove the view, it will not work because it doesn't know uh, which, fi which file do you mean? Where, where, where to find the, the ID. And you're saying here, find the ID of this file. So of the file that was inflated here and passed here to, to the constructor. Next, we're gonna put val description equal uh, colon text view equals again view, find view by ID, r that ID description. Next, what we need to do is to bind the view holder with the adapter. More specifically, we need to bind the view holder with the the data which is passed to the adapter. So we need to we need a way to to get the data which is passed here inside our view holder. This so to have it displayed inside our view holder. And to do that, I'm going to type here val current item. I'm going to put equals elements square brackets, and uh, here I'm gonna put position. So I'm gonna get the element at the current position where the recycle view is. And down here I'm gonna type holder, that title, that text. So we're gonna sign the text now, current item, that title. So now we are signing the title for for from for this particular position for this particular item to our holder title so this is what we're doing here next we're going to type holder which is the view that uh, we created that type uh, that description that text equals current item that description and now this will take uh, this will basically uh, put all our data that is passed here in, inside our uh, uh, view holder and we're going to have the data displayed. Next we need to go inside the get item count and you need to return the size of the elements. So I'm going to type here return elements dot size. And now everything is fine. And now we can create our uh, recycle view. And uh, first let's go inside the activity main at XML and let's give an ID to our recycle view. So I'm going to type ID, ID, recycler view. So this is going to be the ID. Now I'm going to go inside the main activity. And here in the main activity is the place we're going to put together our recycle view and it's the place we're going to instantiate our adapter. So I'll go up here and I'll type private latent it var recycle view. Then another private latent it var adapter example adapter and i'll go down here and first i'll create a function which is going to generate a list so i'm going to type here private fun generate list 
it's going to have a size. So we're going to type here size, of type int, and it's going to return a multiple list of uh, example item. We put curly braces and press enter. Here I'm going to create a list. So I'm going to type val list equals to mult multiple list of also an example item. Then we're going to loop. So we're going to type here for i in ze zero until size. So the size parameter. Then we're going to put here list dot add I'm going to type here example item here I'm going to put uh, title comma and here title and uh, put shift and the i then description dollar sign also i and at the end we're going to return this list back so after finishing looping and adding the elements we're going to return the list return list next we'll go here and i will type recycle view need to connect our recycle view so find view by id we have here uh, the idea of the recycle view so r dot id dot recycle view then we're going to create the and the first let's uh, get the data up here so let's type here val example list equals generate list and the size let's say uh, 100 elements i will go here now i will type here uh, let's push this down recycle view that adapter and we're going to touch our adapter that we created so adapter but let's create the adapter first so i'm going to go up here we type adapter equals example adapter context this and uh, example list as the items next we need to type recycle view that i'm going to put here that layout manager and the layout manager is responsible for positioning the items in the list and uh, we're gonna choose here equals to linear layout manager and the linear layout manager creates a linear vertical list so i'm gonna type here linear layout manager and this then we're gonna put recycle view that set has fixed size to true this uh, if you can put if you don't put set set has fixed size here it will still work but it's good to have that there now let's run our app so our app opened but we have only one element so why we have only one, only element but if you scroll down actually we have uh, first element the second element third element but the, the the space between them is very big so why you having this let's go inside recycle view item and the problem is that here the relative level for the relative layout we pass for the height match parent which means that it will be as big as the screen so as you can see it's big as the screen and this why uh, we get this so let's put this to wrap content so wrap content now if you run this again Now we have our elements uh, without that big space. We have all of our elements until 99. But what I don't like is that I want to have a, more, a border here to, to a shadowing border. And to do that, we need to go inside the, our card view. So inside our card view and put this code. So I'm going to put this code. I, I copied this code from the internet. And this now we need to import that. 
So I'm going to press Alt Enter to create that. So I'm going to select the first one. And that is going to add uh, uh, a, shod a shadowing border to our uh, elements. So now if you run this again, Now, as you can see, you have a, a shadowing border uh, between them, as you can see here. But uh, let's add uh, a padding to the to the card view. Let's put here padding, let's say 16 dp. Let's run this. It still still has that. So let's go inside the linear layout, let's try to put it here, padding, 16 dp, let's run this again, alright, so now we have the padding as you can see here, so put the, this padding 16 dp, and we have this, so they look very beautiful, we have those cards here, and you can scroll to them, as you can see. Alright, so this is our discussion about uh, Recycle View Adapter and in the next video we are going to continue our discussion about uh, Recycle View, more particularly about the adapter. So see you in the next video. Now it's time to see how we can add event listener to our items in the Recycle View. So when we click on an item, we can respond to the click. And to do that, we go inside the uh, Example Adapter. So Example Adapter, not this. So let's hide the emulator because I don't need this. So I go inside the adapter. And to handle clicks, we need to, to add on click listener on the example view holder because the example view holder is the one which basically represents the entire view that, that is this recycle view item. So inside the, the example view holder, we go here and we type init. So we're going to create an initializer, initializer block. And here we're going to type view, so the, uh, the view that uh, was passed as an, as an argument to the example view holder, that, and put set on click listener, and select this one. Now, we need a way to, 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 get, uh, to, get, to get the position of the element which was clicked. So if I click on this element, I need to get the position of this element uh, uh, if I want to display the data of that element. And if I click on this element, so sorry, if I click on this element, I need to uh, somehow get the position of this element and to display the data. And there is a very simple way to get the position. I'm gonna type here val position and I'm gonna put equals and I'm gonna type get adapter position, this one. And that is gonna give us the adapter position. That is gonna give us the position where the, on, of the item which was clicked. So that is gonna give us the position of the item which was clicked. And then I'm gonna type here val item equals elements and we're gonna get the element at this position. And down here I'm gonna add a toast that make text for the context I'm going to pass context and uh, for the text I'm going to say uh, let's say uh, dollar sign item uh, this sh should be called item because we are getting the individual item from our list so item that title all right Let's type here uh, the length, toast, that length, that short, and the, that show function. All right, we have an underline. Okay, so you can do that. All right, now if I run this, And if I click on element one, 
we get title one. If I click on title two, get title two. If I click on title three, you get title three. So our code is working and we get the correct position using the adapter position. Next, let's see how we can add the ripple effect on the items of the recycle view. Because now when you click on one of the items of the recycle view, there is no visual effect and we're gonna add that. So I'm gonna go inside recycle view that item. I'll go inside the, uh, the card view and I'll type clickable. I'm gonna say to true focusable also to true and gonna type foreground and gonna put a question mark and gonna choose android and here i'm gonna type selectable item background now if you run this so now when you click on the items in the recycle view you have this beautiful ripple effect but now we don't have the toast message down here and I don't know why. So let's move this inside the, the relative layout to see if uh, it disappears. So it appears the message from the toast. Let's override resource layout. Anyway, now let's run this. So now when I click, I have the ripple effect and I also have the toast by moving this here. So this is our discussion about how we can handle clicks on the individual items of the recycle view and how we can uh, add uh, the ripple effect. And uh, see you in the next video. Now it's time to see how we can open a new activity when you click on an item of the recycle view. And to do that, I'm gonna go down here. I'll delete this toast message because I don't need this. And we're gonna create an intent. So I'm gonna type here val intent I'm gonna put equals then I'm gonna put intent and here now we need to pass the context so uh, where we are and uh, the context is gonna be this context that is passed here to the adapter and that uh, context that is passed to the adapter is the main activity so um, here we're, we're gonna type context meaning that uh, this is the context of the main activity because the main activity is uh, because here we cannot pass this let me show you here we cannot pass this because we are not uh, in uh, inside the activity we are we, we are inside this adapter and we cannot um, we cannot use context here and uh, what we, we do instead we, we type context and we here basically passing the context of the main activity which is hosting the uh, the activity which is, host, which is hosting the adapter so i'm going to type context then I'm gonna type uh, the second activity, but first let's create the second activity. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go to new, to activity, and it's gonna be an empty activity. Let's call it second activity. Second, second activity. Click on finish. Now go back here and do type second activity. We wait a little bit, little bit. So second activity. Class the Java. Now here we're gonna start the activity, but we're also gonna get some data. And to put the data, I'm gonna use. Uh, the intent, so I'm gonna put intent and let's create some constants. So I'm gonna go inside the utils, right click, create a Kotlin class file. It's gonna be called constants. And here I'm gonna create uh, a class, constants, and it's gonna have a companion object. And here we're gonna define constant val, let's say, uh, key underscore title and it will be equal to title and the uh, constant val key underscore description equals description all right so we go back inside the adapter and here i'm going to type intent let's add the space between those intent that put 
put extra and uh, here I'm gonna use constants that key title first and for the value I'm gonna type item so the item at this position that was clicked and the item that we got here from our list that title then I'm gonna press Control D and I'm gonna change this from key title to key description and here I'm gonna type description next what we need to do is we need to type context that start activity because we cannot type simply start activity here so if I type here start activity there is nothing showing this is because now we are inside the adapter and the adapter is not an activity so it does not have those kind of functions but because uh, the main activity so the context that is passed as a parameter to the adapter is hosting the adapter we can use that context to to start an activity so i can type here context dot start activity and we're gonna pass the intent now here in the second activity i'm gonna get that data so i'm gonna go here I'm gonna type val extras gonna be equal to get intent dot extras and uh, let's call it actually bundle so bundle or data let's call it data and now we need to check if the, the data is not null so if I type here uh, let's say val uh, uh, title and I try and I try to get the title type data dot get key get key I can because this is nullable so it, it can be null so what we can need to do here is to type data we use the Elvis operator dot let now here I'm gonna type uh, let's actually create two text views for our uh, second activity so uh, we take a text view we put it here we constrain it we add another text view below of this one we also constrain it And let's push this up a little bit now let's change the text size so I'm gonna go inside here I'm gonna type text size 20 SP and here text size also 20 SP now go we'll go back inside the second activity and here I'm gonna type first we're gonna create our uh, text view so I'm gonna type here private latent var title text view it's gonna be of type text view and private latent var description text view description text view text view let's type here And here we're gonna type title equals find view by ID R dot ID dot title and text view equals find view by ID R dot ID dot description and let's go inside here actually let's see activity that second let's see we have we don't have the Let's change the ID to title and uh, here to the description. So now if you go back in the same code activity, I'm gonna type title 
and uh, description and again we have those underlines so let's rebuild our project All right now the, those disappeared and now here I'm gonna type title text view dot text equals to it dot get string and I'm gonna type constants dot key title I'm gonna press ctrl D and I'm gonna change this from title text view to description and I'm gonna change the key to description here all right so now if you run this Alright, so our app opened. Now, if I click on Title 2, the app crashed. Let's see why. So, the app crashed because I didn't initialize the description text view. I typed title text view two times, and uh, down I tried to use I tried to use the description text view without initializing. So, let's delete here this title text view and let's type uh, description text view. So, let's type description. Now, if you run this, if I click on uh, the on, on this item, we get title two. So now it's working, as you can see, and we have the description two here. So, so it's a uh, again we have uh, this big space, probably because I didn't constrain that. So let's go in activity second. Let's uh, go to design. All right, so I didn't. Let's push this up, and uh, let's run our app again. Click on terminate. Now, if I click on one of the items, we are taken for, to to the next activity, to the second activity, and we have title two and description two. So the data is uh, send it, and here we get in the data and we assign it to the text views. So now everything works fine. And now I'm gonna end the video and see you in the next video. Now it's time to see how we can customize our app. Therefore, I'm gonna open activity underscore main.xml, and I will delete this text view. I will add an edit text in the middle. We'll not do anything with uh, this edit text. This is just for uh, presentational purposes. So let's center in the center. So let's center in the center. That sounds funny. All right. Let's go to code. Let's delete the name. Let's add a hint. So let's go to values and let's create a string. And uh, always when you you want, you want to always when you use uh, names for your uh, buttons, hints for your uh, edit text, always uh, uh, create string resources because it, it later if you want to publish your app and you want to have it translated in multiple languages, you can just take the string resources and translate, uh, the, translate the, the, res the strings in a particular language. So I'm going to type here edit text, hint, and I'm going to type here please enter your name. I'm gonna go back inside activity underscore main.xml. We go here, we type hint, and we put at string edit text hint. That one. If you go to design, now we have uh, this hint. And you also saw that uh, here uh, in, inside the string resources, we have this name toolbar, and this is the name of the app. So if you want to change the name of the app, you just Change the change it here. Change it here, and it will uh, and you have the you will have the name of the app changed. Now, if I open the manifest file, as you can see, the manifest file is using the name of the app here. So, when, under this Android label at string app name, so if you hold Control and press click, it takes us here. So, under the tag application, so uh, uh, this is important that everything that is set under the tag application is going to be applied through all of all our apps so through all of our activities or, or fragments we'll see what the fragments are uh, in the future and uh, everything that is set here 
will be applied to the to the whole application. And one uh, particular thing that is, that is interesting for us now is this style, and this is the theme of the app. So this this where is the, this is where the theme of the of the app is defined. As you can see, if I hover over, we have uh, we have the color uh, of the status bar, uh, color primary, color secondary. And let's go inside the, this file. And to go inside that file, I'm gonna click on this folder themes. And here we have two folders, one which is called themes.xml and one which is called theme.xml night. And this is we have those two because um, you can switch your uh, your on your uh, on your phone. You can switch from uh, the light theme to the dark theme. And uh, this is why we have here, here two folders because when the uh, user switches the the theme for, to the, from the light theme for, to the dark theme so it will switch from this theme which is the light theme to this dark theme the android system will pick one of those folders depending on what the user uh, chooses so let me show you actually so if i run our, our app click on terminate All right, so now we have the the light team. We have here the uh, action bar. This is this is called the action bar, and this has uh, the colors that is def that are defined here. And the action bar has this color, which is uh, this one here, I think. That is this one, and uh, this thing up here it has this color that is defined here. So this one, see, and it has this hex code. Now, if I um, if I close the app. So I close the app and I go to settings. So let's go to settings. And go to display. And we switch to dark theme. Now if I go back. And uh, now if I open the application again the application as you can see this is the name of the application down here which appears so if i open application toolbar now as you can see everything is uh, in dark because now it's using this uh, second folder now let's change it back to light mode so let's go to settings D display so let's disable this Now, uh, also let's look at the colors that we have here. And uh, as you can see, we have, uh, let's go inside our application. So let's open the application. We have this toolbar and you can change the color of the toolbar or you can create uh, your own team. So I can go inside themes and here I can type style Let's call it my team. And what we need to do is to type parent. So it's this kind of it's kind of like inheritance. And we type here um, team that material. And we choose this one: material components, date, and night. No action bar. And this is gonna remove the action bar that is here. So if I choose that, I press enter. Let's hide this. Let's copy all of the, those uh, items. Uh, I I'm going to copy this. And I will paste it here. Now what I can do, I, I can go inside the manifest. And instead of using theme, the toolbar is going to use our theme. So I'm going to type here, my theme. So now if I run this, As you can see now the action bar disappeared, we don't have because now it's using our team that we created. And we can do the same thing without creating uh, down here uh, the team. We can remove the action bar by simply typing here uh, no action bar. So if you run this, so we have a problem, let's see.
let's rerun this oh actually we need to change now team here this is why we have the problem so let's type here team toolbar let's run this again click on terminate Now again, we don't have uh, the action bar here because now we're using uh, uh, because now we are using ten material components day, day and night, no action bar. And as you can see, the colors that are uh, present here are the colors from this folder. So if you hold Control and you click on that, you can see those are the colors that are used there, and you can change those colors. So let's actually change the colors to see to see what what happens so let's change this to green let's say let's change this to also a green like because as you can see this is also color picker so if you click on this you can pick a color here so we change the colors now if you run this on terminate we don't have the action bar but if I add the action bar so if I go to if I go back to to teams let's type here action bar If you run this, now as you can see the action bar is green because we changed the color and let's change the color for the primary variant here. So let's change also this color because this color that we have here purple, purple this color which is uh, here, let's, so let's, this color primary variant here. It's responsible for the color that is uh, that is up here so we can change that and you can change it actually directly from here so i can click on this go to custom go to colors select a color that's also a green so now if uh, you run this you'll see that both the action bar and the thing at, at the top is going to be colored Click on terminate. As you can see now, both the action bar and the, the thing at the top is colored in uh, green. So this is how you can customize your app using Teams. And if you click here, as you can see, this is also green. It's no longer uh, uh, blue. So blue, it was blue previously, I think. And uh, this is because we we change the team. Now let me show you another thing that we, do, we can do in manifest but for that let's create a new activity. So let's go to activity, we choose empty activity, let's call it uh, second activity, second activity, click on finish. Now, by default, uh, when uh, you're running, uh, when you're running our app, the first uh, screen that is going to be open, the first activity that is going to be open, is the main activity. But we can change that by going inside Android that manifest, and we can take this thing called intent filter. So you can take this intent filter. Let me see. Alright, so you can take this in intent filter. I can copy from the let's let's hide this. So I can copy this from the main activity uh, tag. So I can delete it from here, and I can paste it here inside the activity second activity tag. And we have exported state to false. Let's put it true. Now, if you run this, now it will open the second activity first, not the main activity. So if I run this, 
because we added this in 10 filter and this is responsible for uh, this is that's responsible for making the system decide what activity to open first so now if you wait as you can see now open the second activity because we don't have the edit text and the edit text was was only on the first activity so if I change this back like if I copy this let's put this back to false and if I put this now inside the activity tag of uh, the main activity if I run this now it will open the main activity and we'll have the edit text here right so now we open the first activity the main activity all right so this is our discussion about teams this is how we can customize your team this is how we can change colors this is how you can uh, set the uh, uh, the system to open uh, a specific activity that you want not by the default one that was uh, that was set it so this is uh, this is how we can do it so i'm gonna see you in the next video but before uh, we end our video let me show you how you can add teams to individual activities because now because uh, we added that uh, the team at the application uh, level this will be applied to all the activities and fragments that we're gonna have so what I want is to have a team for the main activity and an another team for the second activity. And to do that, I'm going to go inside teams. We go down here and we type my theme. Actually, type style first. My team, the name. And uh, type parent. And going to type team material components day and night dark action bar. Opening tag here. And we copy all of this but we're gonna change it so we're gonna change this to a different color let's say uh, let's say this color and here also all right so now to change the the team for this uh, for for uh, for our second activity let's say we go inside android that manifest and under the tag activity of the second activity we go here and we type here we press enter go to the next line we type uh, team we type team and put my team but um, first let me show you how it will look if you don't add this so Let's add, let's add the button inside the main activity XML. So let's go to layout, main activity. Let's add the button here. Let's go to design. Let's increase this a little more. All right. So let's add the button, and as you can see, also the button is also is also green. So we put here. It's gonna have an ID. This button go to button go to, and it's gonna have the text button. Now I'm not gonna change. Now I'm gonna create the string uh, uh, resource for this because uh, uh, it will take some. Actually, let string create a string resource for the button to be consistent. So string button text go go to and we go here and we type string go at string button button text Now, if I uh, run uh, our app, so if I run our app, click on terminate. Uh, 
let's actually add the code so let's type here private wait I need var go to act button of type button and I'm gonna type here go to button equals to find view r that id go to button not that one ID that go to button and we add unclick listener for, to this button and we create an intent we're gonna pass this at main activity and second where we want to go the second activity class of Java we're gonna put also so also start activity it so now if you run this click on terminate we have the go to button also we have this uh, now in green and if I click on the go to button, it will make it to, it will take me to the next activity. And as you can see, the next activity it also has this theme. But we can change that by going inside Android and manifest and inside the uh, tag of the activity, second activity. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna type here theme and I'm gonna type style my theme. So now if I run this. If I click on go to, now this has a different theme as you can see. And uh, it's beautiful. So this is how you can change uh, the themes. This is how you can add individual themes to your activities. This is how you can change the, you can add the intent filter to change uh, which uh, uh, activities run first when you launch your application. And now I'm gonna end the video and see you in the next video. In this video, we are going to build an actions menu, which will be here on the top right hand side and it will have two items, one on the action bar and uh, one which is going to be here, which is going to have two items and uh, one of the items is going to have a, was going to have two sub items. So let's see how we can build this. And first we need to click on resource, right click, go to new and we select Android resource file and here for resource type, we select menu. So you select the uh, uh, menu, where is the menu, here, and let's call it menu, to lowercase letters, and we press enter. We go inside this menu, let's first create some strings, so let's go to value, strings, and uh, let's type here string, menu, item, one item one let's press ctrl d menu item two and here menu sub item one menu sub item Let's also create uh, uh, an icon. So let's click, let right click on drawable, go to new and click on vector asset. Click on this clip art. Let's search for a checked. So let's choose uh, this one, click on OK, click on next, then on finish. All right, and uh, let's also, let's give it a different name. So let's go to refactor, rename, and let's call it uh, IC icon click on refactor let's go inside let's press ctrl alt l and uh, let's change the color tint to white so let's put fff here all right now to create uh, our options menu we go here let's hide the emulator and we type on create options menu 
and here we're gonna return return true and here we're gonna type get inflator get menu inflator get menu inflator dot inflate r dot menu menu dot and that is called also menu I should give it another name like example menu so let's change the name to example menu so let's call it example menu click on refactor I have example menu and next we need to pass the menu that is defined up now if you run this click on terminate we'll get nothing and we get nothing because we didn't create our items inside our uh, menu that we created here so here we need to type item it's gonna have an id let's call it item uh, item one it's gonna have uh, an icon and we're gonna use IC icon here and it's gonna have uh, a title and I'm gonna type here string item menu item one let's close this let's uh, let's copy this so copy this let's paste it let's paste it here let's call it item 2 I see icon for you don't here we're not gonna pass the icon and here we're gonna say show as action and we're gonna we're gonna type if room actually we'll uh, delete this and we're gonna instead of uh, show as action if you remember, we're gonna type never and here we're gonna type show as action if room we're gonna copy this paste it item 3 let's call the text to item 2 menu item here so let's create a string for that so let's go here menu item 3 and it's gonna have the text item 3 now we'll go we we'll go back inside our example menu and here we have if room never and for this also never and uh, now I'm gonna go at the third item I'm gonna put opening opening uh, tag and here we're gonna add again another menu so I will type here menu menu opening tag also and here we're gonna type item id sub item one title string sub item one close let's copy this let's paste it here sub item two sorry sub item 2 and uh, sub item 2 also here now but we have a problem So let's go inside the strings because I put two underscores there. 
yes, I put one underscore, so let's delete that. Let's put one and underscore. All right, so now uh, our example menu XML is ready. So let's go back to main activity. Here we inflate that. Now if you run this now, click on terminate. Now we have our uh, buttons, we have our options and we have first uh, this one with the icon. And if, if you click, you see that it's, it's, uh, has this visual effect for because you click. And if you click on this, we have item one, item, it should be item two here, but it's, it's, it is, it uh, says item three. And we have the sub items here. So let's go back here to change that because for whatever reason it says item uh, three. All right, so we have a, a few problems here because it says, it says item three, here, here it says item three, here item two, here item one. And uh, this is because I messed up the, the string. So look what I did here. Instead of item one, two here, I put item one here uh, also. All right, so now if you run this again, so this is uh, very, you should be very careful with uh, the strings and I should be very careful also because we can make mistakes so let's click here now we have item 2 item 3 and we have sub items item 1 and item 2 now everything works fine and there is not there was no problem with uh, the code that we wrote here it was a problem with the name of the strings here the value of the strings now let's see how we can handle clicks on our individual items. For that we need to over override the function here. So we need to override the function here called on options menu item selected. On option item selected. And I'm gonna push this super down. And here we're gonna put when I'm gonna type item dot item ID and I'm gonna put R dot ID at item one then I'm gonna put toast message toast that make text this at main activity I'm gonna say item one let's uh, hide this clicked then I'm gonna put toast that length that short that show that show and next gonna put r and also you need to return so you need to return we need to put parentheses here another parenthesis and we need to also return here true and then i'm gonna put another r dot id dot item item 2 and we're gonna say why I put sequence here delete that only toast all right so let's copy this let's paste it here and it will say item to clicked Again, R dot ID dot item three, the toast, and we're going to say item three, and again, R dot ID dot sub item one, curly braces, paste. Now we're gonna we're gonna just gonna say sub item one clicked and let's copy this and we're gonna put r dot id dot item sub item two. And it's gonna say sub item to clicked. All right, so this is our logic. This how uh, this will oh, actually should add uh, the return true. So return true. So 
so here also return true return true and return true and next we're gonna put here else and we're going to return this super call so copy this paste it here let's delete it from here now let's run our app click on terminate Now, if you click here, it says item one click. If I click here, if I click on item two, it says item two clicked. If I click on item three, it says item three clicked. And if I click on sub item one, sub item clicked, sub item one clicked. And if I click on sub item two clicked, it says sub item two clicked. So our code works fine. So this is our discussion about how you can create uh, an options menu and see you in the next video. Now it's time to see how we can add a toolbar in place of the action bar. And uh, you saw that the name of the app uh, well, is toolbar and this is because I plan for the beginning to make uh, a video about the toolbar. Now, what is the toolbar? A toolbar is, is a more flexible and customizable replacement of the action bar. That's that's all. So. First, I'm gonna go inside here activity.main and we can add the toolbar directly here. But first let's go to teams and let's remove the action bar. So I'm gonna go here, instead of dark action bar to our team, I'm gonna put no action bar. And uh, now I'm gonna go back into, into main activity, actually in activity main.xml. Now I can add the toolbar here, but if I have if I have multiple activities or fragments, I will have to add the, the code in uh, all of those uh, uh, files. A better way is to create the toolbar in a separate file and just include it in all the files that you need the toolbar. So I'm gonna create a new layout. So click on layout, so we go to layout resource file and let's call to this toolbar. Toolbar and then let's change this to toolbar and we choose uh, this one android text android text app compact we just click on ok now i'm going to choose for the layout height wrap content so it will be as the as big as the content in it and uh, also need to pass a background color which is going to be color purple coral purple 500 500 now if uh, now we need to go back to into activity underscore main xml and here we're gonna type opening tag include i'm gonna type layout and we're gonna uh, uh, refer our toolbar uh, layout so we're gonna put our toolbar layout here i'm gonna add an id to this toolbar so i'm gonna type here id and the id is gonna be toolbar now, if you run uh, our app, so let's hide this, let's run our app. Click on terminate. So we have we have the toolbar here, but we don't have the name of the the app and the, the options menu that we created. That is because we have to tell our app that we want to use our toolbar as uh, our action bar replacement. So go inside the main activity and we simply type here. We need to first uh, type. We, we need to first uh, uh, 
connect our... Uh, if first you need to, co- to refer the, the ID of the toolbar to create the toolbar, so I'm going to type here val toolbar equals find view by ID. We're going to be of type toolbar. And I'm going to type here r dot id toolbar. Now I'm going to type set support action bar and as you can see this expects as a parameter a toolbar. So now we're telling to the app that hey use this toolbar as the action bar. So but we have a problem. So it says that it found the Android widget toolbar and uh, 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 probably because I put here let's say toolbar to see what we have here. Yes, we need to instead of this one, we need to choose this one toolbar Android X app compact widgets. And now we don't have any any errors, but I don't like uh, because I have this Android X. Uh, X uh, so let's put push this uh, up. Let's try to, try to import this. So let's go on the left. Let's type import. And uh, let's put star. That, is, that will not work actually. It's not working. And still it's not working. Actually, I'm going to let it there with the with the with this Android X app compact tool, but because it will not be no, it will be no problem with that. Or um, or I I can try to delete this and put here the toolbar. I can type here toolbar Android app compact widget. So now everything is fine. It added here now the import. All right. Now if you run our app. Click on terminate. All right, so now everything works fine, and uh, only the only thing is that we have this uh, the toolbar, uh, the text on the the toolbar is uh, is dark. So let's see how we can change that. All right, so now uh, the the title is uh, dark, and also the 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 item here is uh, is dark, and f- to change that to go inside our toolbar XML, and I need, need to add uh, need to add a theme. So I'll go down here. I will type theme, and we choose the first one: style theme, time of uh, theme overlay, uh, app compact dark action bar. Now if you run our uh, app, now uh, the the title of the app is white and the uh, uh, the icon and the options also, but if I click here on the options, you don't see the the, the text. This is because we need to add uh, another thing inside our toolbar, which is pop up theme. So if I go down here, if I go down here and I type pop up theme, I'm gonna type uh, our own add style forward slash theme overlay dot up compact and we choose this one light. Now if I run our app again click on terminate Now if I click here, now we have our uh, options and everything works fine. So this hour we discussion about toolbar and see you in the next video. Now it's time to start a discussion about layouts and we're going to start with the first one called a linear layout. And as the name implies, a linear layout is a layout in which the widgets are arranged linearly. So let's open activity main.xml, let's delete this text view. And to create a linear layout, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to delete the constraint layout. 
and I will type linear layout. And the linear layout has some uh, specific properties. You're gonna see immediately what properties it has. Now, if I go here and I add two buttons, so let's say like I add a button here, wrap content for the within. So wrap content here also. Let's give it some text like enter. Let's create another button. Let's also wrap content, wrap content. Let's close this and let's give it a text of delete. Now, if you go to design, you see, you'll see that both are on the left hand side on the top because this is how they are arra arranged by default. But what we can do is we can uh, first specify an orientation. So I can go here and I can specify an orientation. So I can type orientation and uh, by, the, by orientation, I mean how they are going to be uh, arranged in our, uh, in our linear layout, vertically or horizontally. So let's try vertically. If you look now at design, now they are arranged vertically. But let's say that I want them to be here in the middle. And to do that, we we'll go down here and to type layout and we choose, uh, actually we choose only, we type gravity and we choose this one gravity and we're gonna type top, so at the top. And now if you look at design, you can, you can see that it's still not in the center. So let's, uh, what you can do now is you can use the vertical bar operator to combine two constraints. So you can say, hey, uh, put this, put the widgets in, inside this layout at the top and also center them horizontally. So now if I look uh, here, now they are at the top and they are head center horizontally. So you, by using this pipe operator or uh, this vertical bar operator, we combine two, uh, two constraints here. And you, you can combine uh, more constraints. You can put another constraint here. So I can put here uh, instead of top. So I can put here uh, bottom. And if I go to the design, now they are center at the bottom, as you can see, and they are vertically because for the orientation, we choose vertically. And uh, we can also, we can change this to center. So we can put here, send, I can delete center horizontal. Or I actually, let me show you how you can do with the vertical bar. So I'm gonna type center horizontal, then I'm gonna put the vertical bar, center vertical. And now if you look, they are both in the center. And if you add another button here, wrap content, wrap content, wrap content, and let's call it uh, login. Here it should be right. Now if you look, uh, you should close this. Now if you look at design, as you can see, the next button is added below of the first uh, two buttons and it's, uh, it's uh, center here in the center. It's center in the center. That sounds funny. And um, the orientation now is vertical. So they're going to be vertically uh, arranged inside the linear layout. And uh, they're going to be center horizontally and center vertically by combining those two. But you can delete those two and you can simply put here center. This will have the same effect. So if you look to design, we have the same effect. Now you can change the orientation here. So you can change the orientation now to horizontal. Now if you look to design, as you can see here, now they are uh, they are arranged horizontally in the center. And uh, we can also type here. Uh, let's see what option what options might we have. Top, bottom. Um, we can put here, so we can put here also top and I'm going to put the uh, vertical bar operator and I can type here right and that is going to put them in the top right hand side. So if I click on design, now they are, they are on the top right hand side. If I put top and um, 
I'm gonna type left. They're gonna be put the top on the left hand side. And we can do the same to, to button. So I can put here bottom. And uh, now it's gonna be down here on the bottom on the right, uh, left hand side. And uh, we can also put it, put them on the right hand side. So we can combine those two and, and uh, put them in many places. So if I go to design now, they are on the right hand side on the bottom. And um, let's delete this. Let's see what options we still might, may have. Uh, we, let's try this start. So start. And they are also put here at the at the start of uh, the layout on the on the bottom. So let's delete this. Let's put uh, center, let, vertical, and pipe center horizontal. Or you can simply put center, and it will have the same effect as you can see here. So um, this is how, how we can use uh, a linear layout. And uh, I'm gonna see you in the next video. Now it's time to look at the next layout that we can use, and that is a relative layout. And the relative layout is a layout which has a lot of flexibility in the sense that you can arrange the widgets within the relative layout in uh, various ways. So let's delete the linear layout. And let's type here relative layout. Relative layout. Now let's give some ideas to these buttons. You'll see immediately why we gave them the, the, the ideas. So I'm gonna type here enter button. ID, delete button, and ID, login button. Now, if you go to design, now all the buttons are uh, stuck on each other because uh, uh, we didn't specify any constraint. So let's start with the, the with the delete button. And let's put the delete button. So I'm gonna type here to write off. And let's type here enter button. Now if I go to design, as you can see now the delete button is uh, is to the right of the enter button, as you can see here. Now uh, what I can also do is I can I can uh, center the enter button horizontally. So I can type here center. Horizontal, I'm gonna put true. If I go to design, as you can see now, uh, the, bu the button is center horizontally, as you can see here. And uh, the delete button is on the right. Now let's add the login button on the left of the enter button. So I'm gonna type here for the login button, to left of ID, and I'm gonna type here delete button. So if I go to design, not delete button login not uh, so let's delete because i think i did a mistake so let's look at design enter button so to left off id enter button so if i go to design now all of them are uh, aligned now if i uh, also put here center uh, center uh, vertically so I type here has center vertical and I put true and I go to design now I, as you can see the enter button is center horizontally and vertically but the login button and delete button are up that, but they are still are on the on the left of the enter button and on the right of the enter button so what we can do what we can do is that we can go inside the delete, delete button so delete button and login button so I go inside the delete button and I can type here a line bottom ID and we're gonna align to the bottom of ID of the enter button now we go inside the uh, delete button uh, go inside the let's go to design is go we go inside the, the login button and we'll type here again a line line to bottom of ID of enter button so we type here 
enter button so now if you go to design now they are all in the center so um, this is how we can use um, relative layout and we have a lot of flexibility with the relative layout and uh, all of this that we did uh, typing ourselves the the code can be achieved by dragging them here and uh, putting them uh, put in put in the widgets directly here but it's okay to also know how the xml code works because maybe some somebody uh, wrote the xml code writes the xml code for an app and uh, you should you should uh, know what uh, it is doing but as you'll see in the future videos there is an alternative to, to the xml called the jetpack compose and we're gonna see how to use that in the future video in a separate chapter now i'm gonna end the video and see you in the next video now it's time to look at the next layout that you can use and that is a scroll view and a scroll view is used when you need to uh, display more information than, than you can put on this on the screen so let's go to code let's uh, delete those buttons because you don't need the buttons and let's change this to scroll view actually let's choose the next scroll view which is uh, a more uh, uh, a newer version of scroll view so let's choose android x android x next scroll view and uh, let's put a text view here I'm gonna put wrap content, wrap content. Let's put for the height also wrap content. And I added some text in our string resources to be displayed here in the text view. So I'm gonna type here text, string, scroll view text. Now, if I go to design, as you can see, now I have this text here. And uh, now if you run this, all right, our app opened and look what we can do. We can uh, scroll to this, as you can see here. So this is what we, we can do in the scroll view. So I'm gonna end the video and see you in the next video.